What's going on, everybody? Cali Death Podcast back once again, episode 19. Today we have a very special episode uh, for many reasons. One, this is our first episode that's not really, uh, you know, geared towards a specific band or musician. Uh, this episode happens to fall on a very awesome person's birthday who happens to be running this shit. Yeah. His name is Casey Howard. Happy Woo. birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Casey. Yeah. Happy birthday, dog. Yeah, Casey. Yeah, and me having a little fucking bro down, throw down, getting some fucking homies together, and we're going to just fuck around and bro it have up. some fun. You know, I, I haven't talked to uh, a, couple of the, uh, a couple of these guys in a while. So, uh, but mm -hmm. how we're going to do this one is different than every other one. So let's announce our, our guests. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming yeah. on. I love you all. Yeah, totally. really cool. yeah. Good time. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, just introduce yourselves, please. All Diego Sanchez. <laughs> the Riff Wizard. The Riff Happy Wizard birthday. Back, back for part two. Back for more part two. <laughs> we know it's copyrighted, but you know, we jack it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Casey. Nice to see everybody else too, man. Pleasure to be here. A lot of good fucking people right here. Let's Cheers, have bro. some fun. Thanks for coming again, dude. Good and, to see uh, you, dude. Yeah. Hell What's yeah. up next? Got Wants David. Out. Fucking. What's up? I'm David. I'm just some dude. Some <laughs> guy, dude. Some guy who's breaking wars. He's fucking smoking. Dude, bro. I'm a Green dude, enchilada. Bro. No, but fishing, Casey's, fucking... Casey's my homie for fucking a long, long time. Happy birthday, Casey. Hell yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. David from everybody. Odious Mortem, everybody, from the, yes. the very beginning. Another yeah. top part two. Yeah. A, a comeback. OG. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess we'll I'll go, go next. And go we got fucking it. Riley. No. no, go ahead. Go ahead, Anthony. You were going to say something. No, I was just going to say, uh, give you the intro real quick. First time <clears> guest, <throat> long time homie. We got Mr. Riley oh, McShane. that's me. Riley McShane. Riley McShane, everybody. Riley. Thanks for fucking Continuum and Allegiant. Bad, and I'm, I make video games and I want to kill myself. I <laughs> oh, no. so, wait In that order. Tomorrow, because it's Casey's birthday, dude. Yeah, Breaking that's, news. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right, now uh, I'm Gary Gear. I'm uh, back. What's up, guys? Yes, What's up? and happy birthday to Casey. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked, to, stoked to see everybody. This is a packed, this is a packed show. There's a yeah. lot of people on us. Stacked so, lineup. Yeah. Packed show with yeah. little uh, plant, well, maybe some plan but yeah let's just yeah. Like we're gonna get right down to the inside scoop immediately <laughs> <laughs> right down to the matter the inside yeah. scoop what is the inside scoop of your birthday i don't know just is it kind of like the red zone on the nfl it, but like with metal yeah. heads that are stationary Cookie dough? is it sherbert <laughs> what <laughs> mimosas joel horner's in the house joseph k's in the house yeah everybody's fucking here we're gonna celebrate uh, a cool fucking dude that we all love and have been a uh, uh, so in various cool. project projects <laughs> and other shit. So yeah, dude, let's just fucking. I mean, who wants to? Who wants to go? I just want you guys there? to talk about how cool I am for two hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally, what I was about to say. That's the whole point of this. Where episode. do we start I, with this? Just I'll, how I cool can do that. Is. I'm happy to do that. Hell yeah, uh, go for it, bro. No, well, it's fine. let me just start. Uh, my say say casey you fucking killed it with this podcast dude like doing it with you has been so fun every week is a blast you do all the editing uh post episode make all the clips you watch every episode all the way through and yeah you put a ton of work into it and i know for our fans that like is actually special and you know i've been hanging out with people that listen to it and and everyone just is so stoked on it so yeah i mean apart from all the other music and all your inspiration and influence on me this has just been a really fun thing to do with you. So cheers to you turning. Hell yeah, dude. What are you, 30? Oh, we probably shouldn't talk about that, but. <laughs> 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 Hell yeah. 30, 30. Thanks, thanks to all the listeners, by the way, too. We, yeah. we just surpassed uh, 500 subscribers this week on, on YouTube. YouTube so yeah, pretty fucking nice. awesome. Bitching. Thanks for fucking coming back every week and roll. bar and all that kind of shit. But yeah, Casey's the guy behind all that shit, dude. The reason why you can see it is because of that man right there, so. California Cheers. love. <laughs> yeah, you guys have been like remarkably consistent with, like, yeah. you know, doing it every week. And like, I, you guys took a little a little break there over the holidays, but man, you guys are yeah, just 
just like an excuse to hang out with friends and meet new people mm. and during this whole lockdown it's been fucking awesome man just yeah, like dude shoot the shit have a couple beers laugh that's so my thursdays adds a little structure yeah. you know there's something to look forward to every week you know no matter what's going on i know that there's going to be this chunk of time where i can just like get away and see you guys and bullshit about the shit that we all love and stuff so yeah dude this has been a that's probably why it's so consistent dude because we all like to come back and do it you know everybody's yeah. going back on tour <laughs> yeah i know yeah. Right? Yeah, maybe if it if it happens yeah. that way yeah it might be no i'm saying like right now every, every week you guys get to go back on tour because the band's getting together at least totally. and then yeah. talking to like heads all over well right now you know in cali but like eventually it's going to be all over the world that you guys are going to be interviewing yeah, and talking dude. to and it's going to be basically like the green room you know we all just hang out and we're just that's uh, the concept homies exactly. talking music we all man. just hang out and sit on our phones and don't talk to each other <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm not in that van <laughs> that's the real green room experience right there yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's the wi-fi password <laughs> yeah that's for damn sure Where's the the progressive comments? Here, here. <laughs> that's in yeah. the parking lot not even the green room yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to places and you learn that there isn't any wi-fi and you're telling your family yeah i know there's a lot of earthquakes and hurricanes and like crazy stuff going on but i'll call you when we land and then three or four days later oh my god not even all over the news are you okay you're all sorry i couldn't get wi-fi <laughs> couldn't get wi-fi <laughs> bars didn't have wi-fi and the hotel didn't have wi-fi and are you kidding me you didn't have wi-fi like I'm, I, I can't use the data dude i gotta get on the wi-fi to make a call yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, i want to start now. roaming right. i'm having a limited data plan man i'm in a fucking band come on <laughs> have you guys ever been like close to like texas where you're going through there and like it all of a sudden latches on to like the the mexican cellular shit and you yeah. just get charged like a butt ton like yeah. oh no way month, bro. i yeah, always dude. always turn that fucking inter that's like the first thing i do on tour is turn my fucking international data roaming off on my yeah. own because it's like it's too many too many border towns you hit like fucking el paso and it's just like oh you're on fucking juarez mexico now <laughs> go down to yeah yeah it's like 28 fucking dollars a minute yeah, yeah. Dude, it's nuts oh yeah. thank you well, fuck well yeah well casey, casey. fucking I uh, I guess I'll go next, man. You fucking, <laughs> fucking guy, dude. Fucking, you've uh, you've always been super, super fucking inspiring to me, man. You know, it's like you, as far as like not even just being like a phenomenal musician across every fucking instrument you pick up, like, uh, you know, being a super fucking chill person. Like, I've learned so much from you about how to handle, like the ups and downs of like being in a band or running a business and just like not even just like from direct conversations with you about like asking for these little pieces of advice but just from like being your friend and like seeing you wow. fucking just like keep your dick up through everything <laughs> you know what i mean like your your that, ability to like tackle what comes head on and just like figure out the next step has mm -hmm. been something that like i have admired about you for a really long time and uh yeah nice man too. you're a fucking <laughs> you're a you're a very very inspiring person and i'm glad that you have made another fucking circle around the sun here to uh keep uh keep it going and uh you know i'm i'm excited to see i feel like i feel like there's like a certain certain type of person who like all of this the shit from covid that has like negatively impacted their life it's like condensed and condensed and condensed and like once this is all over it's just gonna like explode into all these like productive endeavors and just like fucking like taking everything you've learned about it and just like putting it into like the best possible uh set of circumstances and i feel like you are definitely one of those people so i'm fucking really excited to see what this next year brings for you and the things that you're involved in so fucking love you bud happy birthday i'm not going after that yeah no me neither <laughs> <laughs> God, what's left to say, man? i feel yeah. better about myself after that one i'm like oh, i guess i'm not doing too bad actually no. yeah. Yeah. You just give it, you, we'll people like me i didn't know <laughs> you're pretty good at this podcasting thing riley have you yeah you just raised my tea levels yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Love you guys. Yeah. That was awesome. Thank
Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. Good things, man. Oh, yeah, man. Who wants to go next? Come on, let's keep making Casey up. Just like that. Right now, dude. Yeah, keep let's it like going. That suffocation. Gas, gas this bitch up. <laughs> gas him up. Yeah. Ooh, who brought the bean burritos? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, totally. and then, uh, it's like that old Suffo shirt, the purveyors of the extreme. You know? You haven't, you haven't had, you haven't like been on tour and been around all the bros playing your music, but you've always gone, still gone to shows. And seeing people and then now that you're doing this you're really like deep back in the mix and you are a super charismatic like rad dude and besides for being a shredding musician just like riley was saying you know when you just like you do lead by example because you take on these things that are like all right drop your whole life and just divulge into this and see if you can get it cracking you know and then you go into the next one and you just keep it rolling and you're steady and like from the years of knowing you and actually hanging out with you at like functions and stuff, you've got a pretty, like the same circle of friends. And there's like, you know, a lot, a lot of people have the same, like five friends since their childhood or whatever, you know? And I've noticed that you've had the same circle. So, it's, you know, it shows a lot about a person when they actually have like a solid circle that they're doing things with. And then now having all your homies and, you know, like I was saying earlier about just being involved in music, and when this becomes like, you know, worldwide, just by talking to your bros and talking music, there's nothing but goodness. You know, when we were younger and we're starting out, it's like we got something to prove, or I did at least. You know, Derek Boyer was like, oh no, you gotta just crush these guys. And I was like, well, <laughs> what? I don't wanna crush my friends. Like, what are you talking about? They were just playing music. <laughs> He's like, no, you know, cause I'm not a competitive person, like by any means. And Derek's like, no, it's not about the competition, but you do wanna set yourself aside from these other bands and like bring it you know every time and like mm -hmm. i said you know and anytime i talk about you you know when you guys were on the um, when i seen you up in santa ana sitting behind your kit and you were just back there with the you know the early decrepit days you just ah and i was like how is this guy playing you know like there's no editing dude this is like right here in front of your face and you were just killing it and then you just turned out to be a rad That's dude fun. So you got a shred musician and then a rad dude. Nothing but love and nothing but fun and respect, Casey. So thank you for including me in your in your night and in the the goodness of the podcast, the Cali Death Podcast. And thank you, bros, also for collectively getting along in this love and doing good things, man. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, love to have you back, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, eh? We love you, Diego. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah nice. no worries, bro. Yeah, okay, it's gonna be a lot of cheersing. I'm gonna have no more God beers damn, left. Man. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know how much more I can handle. <laughs> I, 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 I can tell it was it was getting you. I'm ready for Joel to talk some shit. Like yeah, let's rest now. Dude. Yeah. I, do wanna, I do want to yeah. flip it a little bit, but uh, <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna say the same shit everyone else is saying. I mean, if it wasn't for, I mean, Casey and David, I wouldn't be in Odious, and if it wasn't for Casey, I wouldn't be in Decrepit. So it's pretty much my whole musical catalog of what I did when I was younger was, you know, Casey, you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And like, just <laughs> me to do it. And like, and I was like, really, I don't think I can do it. And you're like, yeah, dude, you can easily do it. Just do it. He was like, always pet me up and made me um, think I could, you know, he always talked me into doing things. I thought it was impossible. And somehow, That's you awesome. know, we, we made it through and fucking toured the world and toured everywhere and fucking played humongous stages and, and went through the ups and downs of tour and lived together too. We lived together for like five years no and, way. Then and then we toured so we'd live together and then we would tour together so it was just like constant like we were together through to like all that shit which Great. actually leads me i know that's we're probably going to talk about it later but about a week ago the furniture dome is gone yeah oh, dude really? yeah gone. yeah i got a i got a fucking facebook message from the current <sighs> resident not... i don't know if we're respecting identities here but current resident who i lived with at the furniture dome for fuck four years man fucking long time mm -hmm. yeah she hit me up and was like yeah I, like found something of yours that was left behind here and i can mail it to you because like we finally fucking got the boot it finally mm -hmm. happened so. yeah yeah 28th fucking, was the last day uh, yeah fucking, uh, hey can uh, you guys can you guys educate me on this i don't know what the furniture dome is so, so there was a there was a Thunderdome first was the original with so David David where, was in where is it so, so let me let's have here. the birthday boy let's have the birthday boy yeah, let, me, let me chime yeah. in yeah. talk over yeah. let's talk over him let's so talk over. so Josh <laughs> first of all our friend Josh um he he might log on but he's camping and so he doesn't have like a lot of service sounds like a no um, he's supposed to uh yeah 
but uh, super fun. But uh, David, Josh, and I, so, you know, David above me here from Odie's, we uh, found that place. How, how did we find it? Like it was like in the paper or something like that? Yeah, I Old think school. it was on Craigslist. I think it was like okay. the beginning of Cra- early Craigslist days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Casey, check out this new thing called Craigslist. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who's, who's yeah. Craig? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Check it's out the back page, especially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it was that. print. Yeah. No. Yeah. Full release. Then I never needed a girlfriend again after. That. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Uh, but, yeah, it's awesome. Um, but we, we found this place and then like like we we went and looked at like a bunch of other places around santa cruz and like like oh it's too expensive it's too nice what is it though okay the so house. it's like, like a furniture yeah. oh, it's a store house. it's like we lived above a furniture store like in like an industrial area you know where gotcha. mo's alley is in santa cruz nope i'm in san diego bro um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, but no i don't know it was it it was pretty chill spot but like the cool thing is we could play there Mm. like all night long just jamming yeah, as exactly. loud as we wanted wow. like you could have multiple bands playing all all night long which know? we did yeah yeah, yeah. i really also cool. lived there for a few years oh that's <laughs> right there's been a lot of people <laughs> living there uh awesome. yeah but i cool slept there it, a bunch of times <laughs> yeah uh the cool thing about it was yeah it was like in this like commercial district so you could totally play music all night long and, yeah, and there was a hospital right across the street so if you got hurt you're fucking right there uh, the, and the power never went out because you we were on the hospital about that. power grid, dude. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That too. That was great. And but it was yeah. cheap. It was cheap it was as cheap. Super yeah. cheap. That was that's yep. the other thing about that place is that it's like, you know, for those of you watching outside of fucking California, I'm sure you've heard about like our cost of living here. But Santa Cruz is like goddamn near the fucking top of the mountain. Like it yeah. is so expensive to live there. And yep. uh the furniture dome was like a three bedroom apartment on top of a furniture store in like this commercial district, like big living room, like all this shit. And it was cheap as shit. It was like 1800 bucks a month. You split that between like four or five people and you're stoked. Like, it was 1575 yeah. when we were. No, I think, I think you're right. I think it actually yeah. was closer to like 1600. I think it, they would like, it. Oh, it got raised 70 bucks or something like, yeah, God, it, it had like, it had <laughs> like the even... goofiest fucking bathroom where it was almost like a locker room. There was oh, like, so, I, actually, that bathroom, man. I heard, I heard, uh, that that place used to be like a halfway house. Yep. I heard that and, too. Yes. And that's why that's the right. showers were like that. So it's like when you walk into the bathroom, like to your left, it's like there were two showers that were like facing each other it was like a gym shower type of thing and like the laundry was in the fucking bathroom too and it was like a toilet right next to it but with the coin dispenser yeah Yeah. the fucking (laughs) coin laundry is such bullshit and there was that fucking walkway at the very back of it the stairs down to the furniture store but the the door was nailed shut yeah there's all that fucked up shit that was like written on the walls like yeah kind of creepy yeah like yeah, rainbows was, and shit and it was like fucking, bible yeah, verses right. and stuff. I, I always called yeah. that the fucking horror movie hallway the other thing about yeah. it is that there was like a disabled like fire alarm bell like in the hallway <laughs> and, oh no 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 uh, i think i i think i actually ripped that down and we cut it <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why it's disabled. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's why I was disabled. Super smart, dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, if it's, if it's burned, it's burning. That's already going to be done. So that place it. was yeah. just yeah. like code yeah. violation on top of code oh, violation. Oh, dude. dude. I mean, the doors no weren't way. right. Any... Nothing was fucking right about that place. I don't know how it got built. Dude. Yeah. Hey, I'm yeah. S- I'm happy to hear that it lasted that long. It was like yeah. in the family for that long. You know. Oh, totally. definitely yeah. did it and it withstood the the chaos and the carnage that had happened oh, yeah. there dude yeah. but there was never any carnage there like i don't think like there was at the um thunderdome though yeah like, like firework fights inside and just people <laughs> getting thrown out windows and shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> i remember well, there, was a, there was a get together at the furniture dome where literally we listened to gravel pit by wu-tang on repeat all night dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, and yeah. i'm not exaggerating it was on repeat all night and none of us gave a fuck i probably was still dancing to it at like 2 30 a.m dude some of the uh, uh some of the halloween parties there got pretty yeah. pretty gnarly uh i remember one time we had a the body fucking played a show there because they were supposed to play at like uh some somewhere in santa cruz some bar venue type of thing and uh it got like shut down last minute and so they were like looking for a place to stay and we ended up being like well you guys can like you guys can like play your show here as long as you like start after like 6 p.m or whenever it was that the furniture store closed 
and uh and they were like dude fuck yeah and so i think it was like the body and brave young and uh that that show got pretty fucking wild how many people uh, were in there dude like at least a 150 200 oh, like nice. it was yeah the floor was bending it was fucking yeah. oh, it was some shit man it was uh oh, it was it was a wild time that's awesome uh, i didn't know that went down that yeah. sounds good that's good, that was a good one. Shit. <laughs> i went to a i went to a sick show that you hosted riley while yeah. you were living there i don't remember yeah. the bands that played it was like a three band bill i remember one dude it was like a one metal one person black metal band who played drums and sang and had backing is yeah the only, like do you remember I that told, show? I do remember that show. I fucking can't remember who the bands were though. Yeah, that might maybe might have been the same show. Was that? I, I no, like I, I would have remembered if it was the body, but maybe I don't know, man. We only had like four or five shows there, so it's like, mm. you know, once I lost I my wormed that, hoodie at that show. I'm still mad about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, man. But I got we, the shirt now, so it's all good. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We only hosted a few shows yeah. there because I think that it, it just got like too gnarly too quick like too much broken stuff and like yeah you know, it was it when it boiled down to it it was like an apartment where people lived it wasn't set yeah. up to be a venue like you could jam there but once a bunch of strangers car- start coming in and yeah. treating it like a venue that's when we had to fucking call it but the funny were, thing about all this whole thing shows. is is that they finally are having a store closing sale downstairs <laughs> for like dude. 10 years <laughs> every dude they like clockwork it would be like going out of business sale and then yep. that would go on yeah. for like a month and then it would be like grand opening sale <laughs> every <laughs> other month to about twice yeah totally fucking white clockwork and now they're finally going out of business who's the guy who has to put no change out those signs every fucking month like motherfucker do you know no, they, they they pay the homeless person to, to fucking spin the thing like every every weekend they're there for the oh, last dude. Like, they had years. they had one of those fucking like dude, fucking black these guys oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with and, the fucking uh, yeah, and the the wind blowing and, slinger but like it was super yeah. shitty and had a bunch of like holes in it and wear and tear so like it would only be operating at like full swing like half the time and the other time it was just kind of like mm-hmm. and so like I'd like walk, there was a little gas station like right next to the fucking place and I would be like walking there to go get some fucking snacks or some shit. And if I wasn't paying attention, I would just get fucking bat, like just smacked <laughs> by this fucking like wavy arm ass bitch that they always had up front, just fucking terrible. That well, gas station, yeah. that, that quickie mart there was just so underwhelming, man. Well, yeah. that was, it, got, yeah, it, got, it got redone, it got- Yeah, it's all huge got... now. Oh, yeah, really? Huge. Yeah. I, I like fucking- the- I fucking worked there for a minute because I was like, well, it's like right next door and I can like get high and go to work and fucking <laughs> like plug people's tires and fill up fucking propane tanks. Like, fuck yeah. it. And, Gas yeah. stations are chill, bro. Did, yeah. did not last long. Let me tell you that. I got real, <laughs> real sick of the fucking gas station job. Yeah, I kind of remember you pretty much immediately being like, no, this, yeah. is, uh, this is not... I thought the work. story was someone won the lottery there, and and if you yeah. win the lottery there, you get the the station gets paid a bunch of money, and then they remodel. You want to hear you want to hear some tragic shit about that lottery winning? Oh shit! Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. So that happened while I was working there, and uh, what what would often happen? Is, so it was one off of a scratcher, like one of those like big like twenty dollars scratchers. Yeah. And uh, what would happen is like people like it was in like one of those cases, right? And people would be like, "Yeah, give me like a number three and a number f- six or whatever." And it was like set up in rows where the numbers were on top. So if people didn't see the first top row of numbers, they'd be like, give me a number three and not realize that it was like the one above. So you get these like misprints all the time. Like you'd be like, you'd hit number three on the computer and this thing would print out. They'd be like, oh shit, no, I wanted the one below that. And you'd be like, all right, whatever. So usually what you would do is like at the end of the night, fucking, you know, whoever was working would just like buy all the scratchers that got misprinted. So they weren't just like hanging out. And, you know, you'd win 10 bucks and fucking put some gas in your tank or get a fucking, you know, a couple beers or whatever. And uh, I was working and I fucking, it was like end of my shift and there were like three scratchers and it was like a $3 one, a $5 one and a fucking $20 one. And I was like, bro, like, I'm not going to buy a $20 scratcher. I don't give a fuck that it's like sitting there. And uh, the next fucking day I come into work and they're like, dude, someone just won $30 million off of that fucking $20 <laughs> scratcher that you left up there. And I was just like... <laughs> Oh Shut my the fuck. God. It was the one. Well, yeah, it was the one. Oh. Yeah, man. <laughs> I was insane. like, I like had had to learn some fucking coping skills after that shit. Like, 
it's just thirty million dollars just sitting there, right there. Yeah, just, I like, can't ah, even dude. cope with hearing it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't hear like money doesn't it. matter. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, dude, I was just like, well, what the fuck are you gonna do? You know what I mean? At least you like, made it fucking... to thirty million the other route. You know, through yeah, all your right. hard work. Yeah. So. Almost yeah, had yeah, it in your hand. Yeah, fucking someday. <laughs> just so imagine that cat tree if you had thirty million dollars. Gold plated. Gold plated. Gold plated cat tree. That's the goal. That's that's when I know I've fucking made it big. Yeah. Cats are just like slipping all over it. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that. Like, like, what the fuck is this, dude? I can't grip this shit. <laughs> but I, I had some of this really quick, like, kind of similar story where I was sitting at Vegas and just playing the slot machine, losing, losing, losing. I'm like, I'm going to move to the next one. Dude comes to me or comes, sits next to me, pulls it twice, and wins $256,000. Cool. And it's just all like, and it's just all like, and he, you guys and are just... giving me fucking anxiety, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I'm starting to feel it, dude. He doesn't like give I'm a... watching oh, like yeah. parkour videos or something. Yeah, like but he didn't give a shit. He won. He's just all like, I'm all, dude, you just won the fucking. He's all, yeah, I can't believe it myself. He's like, I can't believe you. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you know I was like, I felt it, like yeah. it's funny, like how I felt like I deserved like a, like a thousand dollars, like I just yeah. for just being there, like I deserved, yeah, like right. I felt like I wanted a thousand dollars. I would have given you a thousand dollars, Joel. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate <laughs> just to let that. you know. Fuck yeah. That guy been for like, sure. oh, that guy's been playing this for like an hour and a half. Oh, he just left. <laughs> <laughs> Swoop. <laughs> Yeah, uh, give him a little uh, okay. if no, you That guy for sure, like, it. works on tall buildings or kills people or some shit. Like, fucking, <laughs> uh, can't believe if it he myself. made eye contact with <laughs> you and, said, and just said, like, have a good night, like, that'd be <laughs> fucked up, dude. If he made <laughs> eye contact, you'd be like, my bad, dude. Here's a G. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go cash this in, and then I'll be yeah. back. Exactly. <laughs> Probably not, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're going to be here tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, R.I.P. the Furniture Dome, man. Fuck. Yeah, dude, fucking pour, pour fuck, one out bro. from Furniture Dome. Yeah, man. I know, sure right? Fucking... I'm all poured on my lap. The last monument. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <Hold> <laughs> <those>. <laughs> yeah. Pour one out into your mouth for the Furniture Dome. There yeah. You <laughs> there you go, yeah. Don't waste Actually, it. B- yeah. Bill Robinson lived in the, the hallway for a long time in that little nook. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> it's a secret. for like two years, or you'd like, you know... Dude, I'm did, sorry. Like, you, know. you almost just made me spit that out, dude. <laughs> Bill Robinson used to live in the hallway, dude. In the nook. In the nook. I remember one time, actually, when I wasn't down with it anymore, it was like, I opened my door because I was living on the left side. If you're walking down the hall, I was on the left side. I opened the door, and I just see him just butt naked with his balls out. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> Bill, like... You, can you, I mean, I don't care. Like, I mean, you're, I mean, at least like, give sorry, me some dude, money I thought I was, in, I was still in the mountains. <laughs> there was it a, like an ounce. A, give me an ounce did, for seeing your balls. Did it look was, like a chewed up bubble gum with sesame seeds <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had a nice set of balls i'm not gonna lie <laughs> there was a must there was a time must've, must've. it's all that man. salt water it's all that salt water in keeping them keeping them, <laughs> keeping them <perfect. laughs> yeah. there was a there was a time when i was living there mm. after because where i was like second generation right like it was like or maybe like third generation but mm-hmm. it was after joel had moved out uh but i was living in the room that he used to live in and uh Uh-oh. yep everybody got everybody got like real 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 tossed that night and i i just fucking oh shit i'm like sleeping and i i hear this fucking just like here it comes like fucking chunking like rattling at my door and i was like what the fuck and so i like get up like ready to beat someone's ass because i'm like what the fuck are you trying to it's like three o'clock in the morning and i i like swing my door open super quick and it's just joel and i was just like oh what's up buddy and he's just like what's up dude sleep and just like tries to like push past me <laughs> and i was like joel no 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 sleeping in here you don't you go you don't live here anymore and he was just like yeah dude definitely... no no sleep and just like tries to get you past me and I, like walk his ass out and like fucking take him out to the living room to put him on the couch and like you know when someone like falls on a couch and like the whole couch like shifts back a couple feet <laughs> it was one of those for sure that's probably one of my best memories of that place is just fucking and i actually i woke up uh in the morning um where uh using i used the person you know that runs the place i ripped down her posters and used them <laughs> as blankets <laughs> I remember that uh, posters, yeah. oh my god uh, that's funny fucking... <laughs> blacked out god good memories good memories in that good place memories Dude, it was one of my favorite places to go. I always, I always, uh, I always labeled it as a sanctuary to me in my younger twenties. You know, like it was like heading Highway One down south to you guys was always like a 
a relief a freedom like there's weight lifted i just was going down there to fucking be with the homies make some fucking sick shit or practice some sick shit or fuck up some sick shit but we're still gonna be together yeah. raging we'll even end the night with sopranos on a sunday and i still had to drive back up to the fucking bay for work yep. monday morning you know but yeah. it's it sucks Era's like, end, dude. like because in the end in the end of the day like all you really want is a home that you can just play as loud as you fucking want in yeah. whatever you know like do your thing you know like as a musician and as just a music fan just blasting fucking music like that's what you want but it's so hard to come by so those places like the furniture dome and the thunder dome where you could get away with shit like that um and have shows and have bands playing all the time those places are just so hard to find these days, especially in cities. So, And all of us have definitely felt the feeling at least once in our musical careers that, that like you have this, this, this pressure of creativity that you want to release, but you have, you, it has to happen now and you don't have a fucking place to do it. Yeah, you yeah. don't have, you got to fucking, or you got to, you know, it's just like, having things at home is so like beneficial for for guys who have like ideas that just pop out in the moment they got to get them down they got to do something to get them to remember something they can work on later and and having stuff at home and being able to jam whenever you fucking want dude just it's fucking a big deal like i'm going through that right now um like yeah it's a big deal and i i really appreciate those places so sucks when they mm -hmm. get bulldozed like one after the next you know yeah. and they build apartments or whatever the fuck to just make more money blah 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 yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was actually just talking to someone earlier this week about like that creative process type of thing where it's like taking advantage of that like like when lightning strikes type of thing but like not only like creating like in that moment and like using that to f fuel your creativity but like learning how to stretch it out and like not insert so much of like yourself and like the left part of your brain that like analyzes what you're doing and all that kind of shit. Yeah. Uh, Don't gas out super quick on it. Metaphorically. Yeah. 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 And it's like, it, you know, it was crazy talking kind about of it. Trickle drip it. It, it. it was like training a muscle type of thing. It's like, you have to like, it's like at first, you know, you get these bursts and like, that's it. <clears> but like the more you learn how to like take advantage of it and like stretch it out, like you can have these fucking, creative sessions where you just like knock out a whole fucking song or like even more than that or some shit and it was uh it was wild man but hearing hearing that kind of perspective from someone mm -hmm. wild hey, casey's parents were always really cool growing up they'd let us jam there and stuff and uh yeah i don't know i appreciate like parents that you know allow their kids to play music and don't judge <clears throat> them for what kind of music they're playing they're just stoked yeah. that they're like and they're yep. supporting them and stuff. It's just awesome. Yeah, you should be able to look there, into man. your kid's eyes and just know that no matter what they're doing, you could see the passion, you could see the drive. It's not like they're just going through the motions. Like there's a reason why they're doing it. And, and you, yeah, as a parent, you want to 100% back that no matter what they're doing, you know, even if not even music, if it's art, if he wants to fucking, he's like, dude, I got fucking crazy stick figures right now, Dominic. And I'm like, dude those are some sick ass stick figures and then you see his eyes like light up like <laughs> yeah figures, okay dude. and then he's like all right now and, and this is like a year ago now today he's fucking drawn like these characters that he's seeing you know and, and he's he's duplicating what he's seeing and then he's making up what he you know i mean obviously on the fly it's not as good as him duplicating what he's seen but you could see that he's there's a part of his brain that's firing off and he needs to get it out too that's so cool get it dude. out on the fucking paper yeah, so. that's awesome my middle's um, getting really into art dude and i'm fucking loving it so that's, 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 that's awesome I'm injecting that dude yeah dude when on i the... was learning how to play guitar my uh you know all of it we all you learn the typical rhythms you know smoke on the water iron man you know and then whatever you're into like evolves after that and uh i was playing uh suicidal the fucking with me subliminal uh, yeah, yeah. you know when i started learning the digga digga the alternate picking and uh my stepdad dude is like a john wayne type of dude like hunter <laughs> fucking contract jaywall contractor type of dude fisher guy you know <laughs> and he he was all he came in the room one time he goes uh i had my i had my aunt like the crate you know two tens and i finally got like the next step you know my actually i was, that was like my first amp i got because the first 
amp I actually had was like a like a eight or a ten. It was like a Fender amp that my grandpa had from like the fifties or something. It's like it had like two tubes in it, and luckily I never blew it or nothing like that. But uh, when I got my own, you know, it had a lot more chunk with the EQ and everything. So he was all, all I hear is the bass on the other side of the wall. Dun 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 dun. He's all, can you play something else? You know, he's like, I understand you're practicing and you're trying to learn your instrument, but can you play something else? You know, so it was like. 50 50 you know he's kind of like yeah. pissed and irritated like shut the f- you know and then the other part of him was like look i know you're jamming son but you know play another rhythm and my mom was like hella supportive like you know that's hella awesome. supportive that's awesome dude yeah, yeah. and my and my dad's like you know hey my cup of tea with your music because you know death metal and you know he's in like you know rock and roll and stuff and he's like i pri- i appreciate the musicianship you know, but, but, uh, you know, my stepdad, dude, that was, you know, like you said, practicing at home, having a place to play the neighbors do I'd open my window and I'd just be all right, just, you know, <laughs> letting the whole neighborhood hear it, dude, and just jamming and nobody ever complain. Mom would never complain. And, uh, my stepdad, dude, just that one time he was like, you know what? It's all dude. I can't do turn, it. Dude. Or, yeah. Not he was, time. he was cool though. He's like, yeah. turn down the bass. So at least I'm not hearing dun, 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 dun. He's like, seriously, now that it's on the back of the wall and you got that new amp, he's like, you're chunking it up, you know? <laughs> yeah, just, and if you think about yeah. it, like, what if he was like, turn that shit off. Don't fucking do that. Again. Oh, like, thousand percent. The, you know, yeah. where, where the fuck it would be a different path yeah. that Diego Sanchez went down. Dude, you know? dude, for sure, bro. Cause that was when I broke my ankle and I started picking up my guitar and I was playing, you know, I got so good in a matter of nine months. It's, you know, picking it up every day. It's like, it's, you know, that's practice makes perfect, man. And just, what were you listening to at that time? Woo. I think that time I, it was, uh, just discovered Sepultura and what Mata- album Mataka. sepultura that was fucking the uh, um schizophrenia oh damn oh yeah. yeah so i was like what it wasn't like death metal but it was like because my brother was all into thrash so anything you know went from like blondie and disco and she you know chic rick james all that growing up to um to kiss to, uh, to after that straight up fucking rap you know and break dancing and shit and then after that it went from rap to like Black Flag and yeah. fucking, you know, just Ramones and then all of a sudden Slayer, Metallica, Testament, fucking Exodus, you know, X Hoarder, fucking Forbidden, Violence, yeah. Onslaught, just, you know, Tyrant, like Exciter, like all of it, you know? And then oh, yeah. so it was just like the evolution of it was awesome because that's how it went. But I didn't even play music at that time until Death Metal came out. And so. You know, obviously I couldn't come in, come out playing fucking, you know. Dude, how how underrated is Exhorter? <laughs> oh, big time! I just dude. R- randomly 100%. listened to that like kind of recently, and was like that uh, something in, something in the Vatican. What's it called? Yeah, Slaughter in the Vatican. Slaughter in the Vatican. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, what the fuck? That was, that was the some... time. Like yeah. it's fucking old, man. Yeah. That was like, dude, that was shit. their that was their like to me that was their original sound. You know, because yeah. like what they had before that was just as raw and and hitting, and then. The album after that kind of had more of a Pantera-ish kind yeah. of sound and the better law, production and stuff the too. The Law but... or something. Yeah, The Law, yep. That one so... tripped me out, dude. The first time I heard it, I was like, wow, dude. There's yeah. some big similar- similarities with all this, dude. Like, yep. Even totally. his voice at times, you're like, damn, that mm-hmm. really does sound like Phil, you know? Yeah, for sure. And that's what, I don't know, it's what trips me out about. I, I'm gonna. I don't know. I don't want to talk. To... <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it sucks when you want to try to talk about something, but like you're not trying to. Well, I mean, it's just smack like, on something or compare all, anything or get other people's opinions. We're all but, too young. We really don't know who came yeah, first. But, you know. But like for Discourage, we never wanted to veer away from our sound. We always wanted to be fast, dark, brutal, just in your face. You know. And then when you cool. got bands that kind of change, like almost. 100% of what they were, you know, whether you call it artistic abilities or just, you know, being able to because you're a musician and you can just do whatever you want once you're established. And it's like, it's kind of like that same thing with that old school thrash stuff. It's like before I was a musician or I was educated and whatever, hearing bands change their sound, their style, it's like you just took it with a, oh shit, okay, well, it kind of sounds like this. And either you're a fan of it or you're not. You know, and it's like that was that was my first, 
instance of a band going from this to this as opposed to you know metallica the first four albums they evolved and they had the same sound slayer they've always had the same sound you know and like just other bands that just you know exodus the first like two three albums you know it's like and all of a sudden things change and you're like oh what the hell you i think know? the scourge is the first band that ever like assault me live like I got like <laughs> yeah I think you guys so, like your music like physically beat me up yeah I mean, yeah dude, through, uh, through, I was like I like walked out of it like limping and I didn't even get touched so uh David uh so basically uh, we uh we saw Discourage uh Bloodletting one 2000 we were like 17 so in high school and David and That's I crazy. cruised out there changed and, my life uh, yeah David was a big expanded my mind I downloaded I downloaded the fucking the that was like patterns. Napster days huh. Yeah, I mean, I was I was down with Discourage before that, but like that was the first time we saw you guys, and yeah. Maddie was singing for you. Yeah, and um, that was a gutted days. Yeah, yep. just she like I don't gutted. know the yep. patterns that you like write and the guitar and stuff. I just love them, man. Yeah, Fucking it's such, that's such awesome. a party, so Thank influential. You. Yeah, that's rad. <laughs> I was telling Casey earlier. I was like, you know what? I don't even know. Like, I don't even, I, for a long time, I had no idea the structure and the composure of music. Like, until Ed joined the band, then he was like, when I was, when I'd show him the music that, you know, when we were mm -hmm. writing and stuff, he's just like, okay, was well, it a bar or a measure or is it, you know, eight or six? Or, and I'm like, you know what? Like, when I'm showing him a rhythm, because when I'd write it, it was just Ben and I jamming. So I'd show Ben how, how I play it and I just break it down, how I broke it down because, the sound of single notes to bar chords to power chords to augmented to diminish all that weird stuff you it ha all has a different sound and when i from me being a single guitar player and ben being basically my other guitar player even though he was bass i would you know have him do different sounds when i'm doing power chords or singles or whatever and so i'd break it i'd break down my rhythms when i'm showing ben okay this is you know, doo -doo -doo -doo, like, you know, five or six, you know, single notes and then chords for, you know, yeah. three or four. And then when I'd show Ed, he's like, that doesn't make any sense, you know? Well, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, this is, you know, the, in music, you do it like this and this and this. And I was like, well, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I don't know any of that stuff. This is how I showed Ben and this is how I play it. And... You're all, but it goes like this. Yeah, the, exactly. So, he, so, so after like, <laughs> after like a, a song or two, you know, he's all, you know what? He's all, I don't understand it. And I don't get it, but you already automatically know when the loop or the rotation or whatever it is you know even though like just how i just wrote it it fell into place it's not how it was broke down and then when he explained to me where he was talking you know where he was coming from the first time then that's when all of a sudden i learned about 10 11 10 like, 10 14 10 11 10 shit. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you're you're within these bars but you can also do other things you know inside and outside of them like however you want as long as all you guys are doing it together and just got flow and rhythm and you know when you were talking about your progression and music uh you said hip-hop and break dancing so oh, did yeah. you say you used to break dance Fucking hey, dude. My brother's seven years older than me, so when he was making all those transitions, I was just a little duffer, so I'd follow him, you know? He'd come home, like, you know, one minute he's, you know, jamming kiss, doing his thing, and he came, comes home one day with, like, silk pants and zippers and three flowers, and, you know, and he's like, yo, check out these moves. And I'm like, what? And then he, because he was in a, he had a crew, and they we went to like conventions and did all that. So when he'd come home, he'd say, "Look at what I learned," and he'd teach me what he was doing, trying to get me in his crew, kind of, you know. So I, whatever he learned, he'd come home and tell me what I, what he learned, and he'd kind of teach me the same way. So I was in elementary school in like second grade, battling like fifth and sixth graders, dude. Cause, That's badass. Because you know, I. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude it was so sick and even now when i go you know we go on tour and i'll be you know wherever and there's just shit little metal heads dude and all of a sudden some hip-hop tune comes on or like if effigy comes on you know and all, goes, all of a sudden i'll be all dun, dun, do a little floor routine real quick and they're like what dude like you know <laughs> wizards out here that's <laughs> awesome you know, in this bar like what the hell is this carrie I, want, I'm, I just thought about asking you this right now. It's totally out of nowhere. But if there was a hip hop song that would get you to break dance, what, what would that be? 
uh you a hip-hop song for me <laughs> for you oh man that would make you break dance right now that would make me break dance right now a hip-hop <laughs> song that would make me break dance right now <laughs> i don't know that there's an answer to that question yet, but... <laughs> california um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> i can barely name hip-hop songs a name man. a hip-hop artist if there was a power metal song that would there get you, you to break dance right now <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. i've like already done that dude Carrie, <laughs> riley that's, understands that's like the every, path to every weekend he's like you yeah. don't you don't know how sick my helicopter is when rhapsody comes. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah totally. so when, when i hear that heavenly dude just watch out yeah. yep, yep. Right we were trying there, we were trying to get josh on tonight but he's camping so like he was trying to, but I, I don't think he has service uh yeah dude he should get david, away from the phone if he's out camping david and i remember like the mornings of josh like getting ready you know like he's always blasting power metal yeah. oh yeah it's nice it's a good way to start the day <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally. it's, like, it's like coffee Why it's like, yeah, 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 like a there. less a less california <laughs> version of metal than power metal it's like <laughs> like the opposite vibe it is like, kind of huh yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. it's like listen to the guitars yeah. bro yeah it's fucking brushing your teeth to fucking seal eyes and shit dude <laughs> is there like a country where like power metal Fight is that kind, black, of, kind of the main you know it's like oh, norwegian yeah. black metal or you know like well, it be germany or well, i mean yeah. like it's pretty england popular. i would say right england, yeah. really yeah yeah okay i mean I feel like a lot of power oh, metal no. bands come out of england i mean rhapsody is italian uh and they're like mm -hmm. you know up there on like the the top of the fucking you know power mm -hmm. metal band world sure um, they're great they're great journey music dude if you're yeah, in a, dude. and you're driving for very long dude, if you're ever time. looking for an emerald sword that's the band <laughs> uh, fucking, yeah <laughs> Yeah, they're good for like uh, running on the treadmill or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's, yeah, for yeah sure. it's, it's dude, to pump well, you up, dude. You gotta, I, I'm, you gotta give unholy over war the cry. Tunes. Unholy war cry is the most requested song by my oldest, Trevor. Mm -hmm. Whenever he's, I'm like, we gotta listen to metal, dude. He's like, all right, but you gotta put on unholy war cry first. Who's Which, that by? It's Rhapsody. It's a uh, from. Uh, oh shit, I can't remember the name of the album. It's the one that totally looks like it would be like a Game of Thrones fucking cover. It's mm. dragon flying through the. It's like right before that's like they every Rhapsody the... cover. I, I think <laughs> I, I think that's I think that one's off of uh, Power of the Dragon Flame. Oh yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. Unholy war cry. This is a question that could Google could answer, but isn't there like Rhapsody of Fire is like a separate band? Yeah, that? they so, had to change it. Yeah, yeah. So they had to change it. Uh, I can't remember why they had to change it. I think it was like a member thing. I think it was like 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 certain members left and then they tried to take the rhapsody name with them but like they like couldn't or like it was a legal thing so then the remaining members were like no we're rhapsody but we're rhapsody of fire uh yeah it's like the terrorizer and terrorizer la deal or yeah like, okay okay Ghost BC, same exact dude. thing but i think rhapsody of fire is the only is the moniker that they release under now so maybe it's the main guys i, I don't I well don't it's it's luca Tarilli. it's the guitar player it's fucking mm -hmm. luca Tarilli. i don't think that uh their singer Fabio sings for them anymore. I think he just sings for Angra now, but I could oh be wrong. God. It could be I could be wrong about that. Um, Riley, since we were talking earlier about you know, um, parents supporting metal bands in their yeah. living room or whatever, fucking, I wanted I wanted to practice at your house. <laughs> can you can you uh, <laughs> can you tell the fans how you got your start in music when when you moved to Santa Cruz and yeah, jamming man. in in my parents' basement with me and the homies? <laughs> yeah, dude. So I uh, your side of it, yeah. I uh, I started taking a fundamentals of music class at the uh, community college Cabrillo. Yep. Uh, maybe like a year after I had moved there. Um, and in that class was this dude named Finn. And uh, and Finn Strobe, what? Finn Strobe? No, no. no. <clears throat> okay, okay. Uh, and so uh, he, like, I looked like way more like scene emo back then, like kind of like weird goth kid type of shit. And he was like death metal straight up, like all the way. And uh, but we were talking about something, and like I mentioned some band that I listened to, and he was like, "Oh, well, you must not be a total poser if you listen to that band." uh and was so we ended up getting 
<laughs> it was yeah, it was totally rap city. Uh, and so we uh, we end up talking. I think it was like Vital Remains or some shit like that. It was some, some something something tough. Uh, yeah, fucking. Anyway, so I met this dude, and he was like, "Well, you know, I I, I play drums. Uh, what do you do?" And I was like, oh, "I'm I'm like mostly a vocalist." And he was he was like, "Oh, well, my band like needs a vocalist right now. So you know, if you want to come jam." It'd be cool to like see what you can do. So I go over to uh, this kid Phil's house, uh, and he had he was he was living with his mom at the time. We were all fucking kids. He was living with his mom at the time, but he had this like the house had this little like like detached like garage shed type of thing uh, towards the back, and then behind that there was just this like giant field. So it was one of those places where you could like kind of play music. Um, we called it the crack den because it was gross in there. Felt like a crack den. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, we play, we play, rehearsed a couple times in the crack den. They were like, "All right, cool. Like you're you're in the band, all this kind of stuff." We ended up moving up to uh, these uh, these storage units up in Watsonville called AAA Storage. Yep, where yeah, AAA yeah. Storage, dude. Where all the bands used to practice, man. I was like yeah. death what's, metal what, heaven what's back that? then. What's that? What's AAA? Tell, yeah, tell me more. Let's not get too sidetracked. Let's not get too sidetracked. Uh, what was yeah. that? That's a whole other hour, dude. We'll, yeah, we'll, right. we'll get yeah. there. We'll get there. Oh, I love uh, it. I love it. I just, okay, keep going, please. Yeah. So we were in, we were in AAA. We were, uh, we were sharing a room with a band called Giraffes Giraffes who actually did very well for themselves in, in the more like weird math rock kind of, kind of circuit. And, uh, I, I don't think we ever had a bass player. Like, I think that like we had our friend Ben play yep. like baritone guitar because he, he wasn't a bass player. Uh, and we were all idiots and didn't realize that like a baritone guitar is not the fucking same thing as a bass. Uh, and so, <laughs> and then I saw you guys at uh, that coffee shop downtown yeah. Pergs at Cafe Pergola without a bass player. Yeah, I which also live. isn't there anymore. Pergs is gone now yeah, too. Pergs is yeah. gone too. Rip. Is it but, like demolished on or? Nah, I think it's just just not no longer business. I don't know. It could be demolished. They shut it down after I moved. But anyway, yeah, Joseph came out to that show, saw us without a bass player, and was like, hey, like you know. You know, I guess Joe, you you knew Phil from high school, right? Phil and I oh. had a band before he was in Conos, and we right. used to. I mean, Phil was like first kid that like smoked weed with me, like turned me. He was like the dark like influence <laughs> in my life, like drugs, sex, whatever, just weird shit. You know, he was like the dark kid, and 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 you know, I I with I, each I, other. I, I love Phil. Phil's one of my <laughs> favorite people of all time, and mad respect for for life. Yeah. So yeah. So so I guess that because they knew each other and had played in a band with each other, he was like, oh, well, there's this kid, Joseph, that could play bass for us. And so Joseph shows up to AAA, these storage units, with this, like, bright red fucking six-string bass. And we were just like, whoa, what is this? And he's just like, you know, I'm sure. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. He's still got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh. It just just shreds and just you know and and so we we ended up having joseph play bass for us and eventually we were like well you know we can't really afford this practice space anymore and like we were mostly all living with each other at the time me and phil and finn were all uh living in a place with a couple other people and uh we were like well for some reason we couldn't practice there didn't want to practice there or something like that and and so we were like well you know let's let's go over to joseph's house and the way joseph's house was kind of set up was that it was like the street level but then there were like these stairs that led down to this kind of like basement area and then behind that was like a like a lake or like a creek or some lagoon. shit lagoon yeah, yeah lagoon that's what it was and uh and yeah that was the spot for a long time it was just the we would go down and jam at joseph's and you know write some songs and I don't think we ever actually we got like halfway through putting out like a real recording, but we never we never actually did. I think we put out like one song for like a a, a compilation, compilation disc. Yep. Yeah. The dudes from a band of orcs, they were putting together a comp and we got one song on there called The Uncreation. Yeah. And then we started recording with Max Zygman mm -hmm. at Castle Ultimate or whatever, not Castle Ultimate. What did he call his uh, studio at the time? Parade Outrageous. Parade Outrageous. Parade that's outrageous. the one. Yeah. yeah. And so we were halfway through some sessions on on some other material. And then um, our guitarist Shane yeah. like demoed a whole like EP worth of stuff that we didn't actually play, uh, record, but he had, you know, we were playing that stuff live. 
But those yes. were the good days, dude. I mean, I, I, I fondly remember it's like just so innocent and just before <laughs> you feel like the pressures of life, you know? So yep. good times, dude, there was, man. There was a song, there was a riff that Shane wrote that was so good that like I still remember it to this day. Where so sick. Speaking death metal. riff, dude. Like, I like how you immediately knew what I was talking about. That fucking just like. So you you told me this last time we chilled, like like when we reconnected that one day out in in Esco or whatever. Yeah. I like didn't remember that riff, and then I went back. I found the old guitar pros, and I found that riff. I have all of that shit, dude. Oh, dude, you gotta send it to me, man. I'll send it to you. Yeah. So. Legion should cover it, dude. But Shane, Shane, and Finn. <laughs> went on to form the band Gloam, who you should check yeah. out if you're a and fan Gloam of the show. Gloam is sick. Do they, like, are they still doing stuff? You know, I, I hung out with, uh, um, oh my God, singer uh, Colby. Yeah, and uh, yeah. he said they're not right now, but that they're like, you know, not broken up either. So yeah, right. so they're on hold, yeah. but sick, like atmospheric death doom, super fucking cool. Yeah, dude, it's super good, super good stuff. Mm-hmm. atmospheric death doom mm. well black, dude, it's black know, right? disembowelment it's, or like it's, what? It, it's like a, it's a <laughs> world of its own man like it's like it's colby has these like real like sinister almost like black metal-y kind of guitar parts but like he's still more like like technical like in like the way he he picks uh he he does a lot of the like like up and down the neck type of stuff uh or not up and down the neck up and down the the strings type of stuff when he picks and so he'll like be like working these cool like He'll like start with a chord and then like embellish the chord pattern as he's like moving up and down, but he's like screaming the whole time. Is it kind of like ulcerate style? Yeah, kind of, but like not as not as techy, not as like aggressive. And so he's got this like, (laughs) it's just this super cool like you know, and the effects that he puts on it creates this like, it's like it's like an atmospheric death doom type of thing because they'll have these like sections where they just fucking. <laughs> just fucking like get super super doomy with it it's like it's rad it's this weird blend you would never yeah, think would work but the way all the moving parts come together it's just like dude this is fucking sick yeah Check yeah good out. band very good band oh yeah yeah thanks man cheers for that story and just you know mm. that was do fun. you have joseph fun do you have that one song from the comp saved on the computer somewhere? absolutely yeah Oh yeah. Oh, okay. It's on. All it's right. on my SoundCloud too. I can. Uh... Boom. Bonus. Yep. And yep. everybody, what's your SoundCloud uh, pl- plug? It is SoundCloud.com/slash/Joseph K. Boom. If you want to hear that shit, there it, it is. Might be a dash between the Joseph and K. I'm not sure. <laughs> might I'm, be gonna, I'm gonna find out right now because I want to listen to that <laughs> shit. I haven't heard it in so many years. Oh, you yeah. can throw it on. I mean, it's not. It's probably not copyrighted. Oh, all right? free. I, yeah, if it's not. Yeah. I just remember Riley like back then like. You were doing like like I think maybe Chalky was like more of an influence or something. Yeah, I don't know, but sure. you were definitely like your range and I don't know, dude. I've never had. I mean, this is fucked up because I just literally jammed with the new vocalist today. <laughs> but, and all all the vocalists I've jammed with since have been sick as fuck. But you know, I mean, I still use you as my like point of like reference for whenever it's like you know like who have i jammed with or you know just just uh good vocalist in metal these days or whatever i'm like dude i it's hard to come by someone who's as good as riley and and i just know that you've you've carried that talent i saw from back then all the way through an amazing career so far and yeah Thanks, anyone guys. that could tibetan throat sing and be a death metal singer too yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. doing that back then too yeah that was yeah like, that's when i first got into it was back in the Kano's days like 2008 2009 fucking yep. Yeah, it was real. Yeah, you were doing wild shit. I told this story last time, but me and Joel saw you guys play. I can I can never remember where it was. It was like outdoors in some field somewhere. Oh yeah, that was remember um that? that was in Watsonville, right? That was the yeah. scum fest. That was the scum fest that that we made. So the the compilation that we fucking contributed a song to was in support of that festival. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Scum, yeah. the Santa Santa Cruz Underground Music Festival. Yep. So it's yeah, all yeah. DIY. Was there physical copies or was it just like a like a MP3 release? Comp? Oh God! Uh, no, there were physical copies. I had like fucking forty of them in the trunk of my car for years. Just like so many. Years I'm sorry, I, think, I forget what year it was. Oh nine, like 
2009. Yeah, I want to say 2009. Actually, Scumfest itself was 2010, but I think we recorded in 09. Yeah. Okay. Word. Yeah. I, uh, here. Yeah, because I joined. I joined Son of Aurelius in 2010. At the end of 2010 in October. Yeah. So. Trip, let's let's dude. let's listen to like 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Totally. Oh shit! Wait. Share sound, dude. If you're listening to the podcast right now, Casey, I know yeah. this isn't this isn't beach music, but I, I'm sure you can still relax. Coming with those little wow, wow. fucking Damn. digging that bro yeah, i actually yeah, really yeah. enjoyed yeah. that <laughs> good time that fucking circus lead man always gets me like <laughs> but i like weird shit like that you know i like i know little fucking uh curve balls thrown in there every now and then yep but that's sick dude no that i mean i like yeah, that, that i like cool. that demo dirty sound and it just yeah. takes me right in there you know it's kind of I have like a gojira thing going on on the fucking guitars i've heard that oh. song before but it's been freaking forever dude yeah i think that there were there were definitely some pick scrapes going on uh yeah fucking... oh yeah there was some like copying of the uh the concept of whales like space whales instead of flying whales but... yeah yeah, yeah, yeah some, fucking some of that the the worship of warships it was all about like these different races of people that like had these space whales that they would like use as planets but also like intergalactic battle stations we were so high man we were like... <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> the kano's house was a trippy place for sure yeah had... kano's house was that yeah. was that was my first life experience that like started off super cool and then ended like as badly as you can imagine like uh, yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a horrible horrible close to that chapter but it was fun <laughs> while it lasted yeah well everyone in that house i'm i'm chill with today and, and luckily i was you know distance away from the drama so i was yeah. kind of away from it so i'm happy to just say everyone there i still love and respect and so who peed on who yeah yeah, I, yeah. yeah right i was, <laughs> I was privy to no peeing at all yeah i haven't uh i haven't really kept up with those guys over the years i mean there was like a lot of stuff where it was like people owed me money and like it was just like a couple yeah, a couple bad yeah. blowout arguments like after the fact that just like didn't weren't conducive to staying in touch but eventually uh one of the guy the guy who owed me money hit me up a couple years ago and like made it right and was super cool about it and we kind of like made amends but still like haven't talked to each other since then <laughs> For sure. so, yeah i wish i wish i could say the same because those guys were super cool super important part of like my musical coming up in the metal world you know what i mean and yeah uh, but then but then this guy fucking carrie Oof. it was he was he was the actual most important person in my in, <laughs> in my in my musical uh musical journey so he carried you uh, we thought uh, you sold I out did. so hard. No, you just carried kidding. me. Yeah, no, right. yeah, right. Yeah. Everybody like, did, dude. Oh, now you're doing like commercial metal. Okay, I see. Yeah, right. Is. Fucking son of Aurelius, the most fucking, you know, might as well have called ourselves Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I totally heard that they're a core band, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up core, whole time, all the way through. Dude. Breakdowns the whole time. And then we released all, a prog. Uh, we released a prog metal album, and everyone hated it. At the end. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Probably, that's probably false, one of my favorite albums. False. If you go back, <laughs> you should go album. back because I'm sure I said it, dude. Under a Western Sun's one of the fucking coolest fucking albums I've heard. That in the album last has fucking... actually aged very well. That totally. album, it, it caused it, a lot of negative waves when we first released it because people were expecting another tech death record. Just the change. That's so a, that was what yeah. Diego was what what Diego was saying uh, talking about earlier um about staying it staying as one thing as a band i 
and and how how people react to it. I don't know if that was what he was actually saying, but yeah, I was in saying. my head. Yeah, so I was in my head thinking about uh, the fan and the people who who stay like super religiously <laughs> true to these bands that fucking stick with it. But I'm like, I'm down for the whole fucking path, bro. I'm down for the whole journey. And so when Son of Aurelius fucking came come out with that comes out with that new album, I'm like. I'm fucking ready for this shit. And yeah. it was like, a, <laughs> what is it? What no, no, no. I was what laughing at Casey so earlier. This, this whole time I'm, I'm back, real, back, I'm real back with you now. In, okay. in regards like, to like, I'm like, the, I'm like, I'm like I don't know like, if everybody's <laughs> laughing at me right now. Or, <laughs> or like, did I fucking blow a booger out uh, on the microphone? And it's watching, right watching Casey disappear into the fucking yeah. beach, bro. Yeah. I was losing it. He turned into Beetlejuice earlier, dude. It was awesome. Some good acid. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh my god. But so did you no, have a good reaction or a bad reaction? Oh no, what I or was saying was what my whole thing is I've always followed the band through their journey. Oh yeah. And and, and how they change along the way. You know, it really t it, I can't even tell you a band that I fell in love with in the beginning of their career that made a change that made me feel like bad enough to stay away. Like I, Oh, I you actually, don't know any of those bands? Off the top of my head, for me personally, oh, that's, I'm that's, saying like I that's, like that's awesome. <laughs> no joke, dude. Like, I wish I could say the same like my, thing. I mean, I'm not. Sorry, what I was just gonna say it was like Cynic's a uh, perfect Fran, example. Fran, a Fran, a Fran. Yeah, I fell in love with Focus, and I oh, locked Cynic? in as a fan. I locked in as a fan to where no matter what they did after that, I was in it. I was ready to fucking be there. Yeah, yeah watch it, love it. And, and it was the same thing with uh, Son of Aurelius. To be honest, dude, like I wasn't really like super familiar with the first record. So I was it, like in that bridge in between realm and Under a Western Sun was actually the first one that I really latched on to because I do like, <laughs> uh, I've said it in past episodes where Bungle <laughs> is totally fucked my head to where I can listen to a band that plays so many different styles of music and so it's just like it's easy for me to ex uh, um, have a have a good experience with an album like Under the Western Sun. Yeah, looks like man. looks like Thank KC you. is Under the Western Sun right and, now. And I, <laughs> he's floating into the fucking, beach. <laughs> fucking what's what's the opposite of Sons of Northern Darkness? Fucking what's the <laughs> uh, Fathers of uh, Southern Lightness? Yeah, yeah. That, that's Casey right now. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> On that album, Immortal, uh, they'd so have a song about like Antarctica. Yeah. It's like the most northern place of all. It's like so north, <laughs> it's all the way south. <laughs> and it's flat, too. Huh? Yeah, I don't know yeah. if I love that or hate it. Like, I fucking love <laughs> I know, dude. You just keep moving forth oh until you God. almost touch the South Pole, and you're like, dude, this is the most <laughs> North spot, dude. <laughs> Turns out there is no north on a globe. Go yeah. figure. Right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, dude. Not, I mean, to keep licking the taint of Under the Western Sun, that shit was a emotional roller coaster for me. I even fucking text Carrie as, as soon as I, I... In the moment of me feeling these things, I had to tell him. So I just spilled he it out He told me something like text. a fucking paragraph. It was really sweet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It really me awesome. meant a lot at the time when it was... It was and I mean, out. driving time, Highway 1, great. driving Highway 1, <laughs> driving Highway 1 back up home, you see all this beauty and you're listening to fucking that album. You're just like, oh, yeah, dude. I fucking get the fuck out of this shit, dude. Fuck all you other yeah. motherfuckers. <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing. And that album dude, actually, there's some great, great fucking vocal parts on that yeah. shit that if people are talking shit about clean vocals, whatever, dude, you get out there and fucking what? try and do that shit, dude. Yeah. yeah. Well, dude, actually, no well, all of us like clean vocals. Like, nobody, like, doesn't like clean vocals. <laughs> if I, if like, I could like, sing, and, you know, you oh, I, don't it like, I, don't like, I don't like Sabbath. And, <laughs> Why like, no, but I mean, like, to be like, I don't listen to any music with clean vocals is like, you're weird, dude. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is a very like, weird concept. Why would you like, not? Well, like, that album are actually really was really like serious about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, what? Well, that album actually helped me break out of the whole being stuck in the metal. Like, it's not being, you know, down the same path, doing the same thing. It's not the same, like, a group, like technical, whatever, like, blah, blah. Like, I remember, like, the first time Carrie showed me that, like, some of the stuff in the studio with Max, I was like, I almost wanted to start laughing at it when I first heard it. 
and it became one of my favorite albums. Like, <laughs> like, it, it, like, literally became one of my favorite. It, it, it's my Spotify number one is "Course of the Years" of all time on Spotify. Yeah, it's number one. So like, I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah. I was in the band and I was playing it for a little while, but like, like, I still listen to it all this. I still listen. I listened to it yesterday. Like, I listened to it. Like, it's part of my. I, I remember when we showed you that pre-pro, and you you kind of like took me aside afterwards, and you're like, <laughs> I was like, hey, you man. guys are gonna get some backlash. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll say this: like, when there's a death metal band that then does an album like that, you're like, whoa. At first, you're like, okay, they're trying to like create another death metal album like that but the thing is they're not they're just yeah. trying to write something that's not necessarily death metal or anything and you can't yeah. judge it like that the thing so. when we when we went into that album like i think the the biggest consensus that we had all kind of met with each other was like we're just gonna write music that we want to write like we're not gonna adhere to this like oh like you know we have to write another death metal album even though none of us are fucking into doing that like we all have to like force ourselves to do this tech death shit because like that's what people are expecting we were like fuck that that's like not why we make music is to you know you make music because it's something that's like inside of you that like if that's you... something you want to make then you make it you know yeah exactly, exactly. you know what i mean yeah. and it's, it should uh, be for you first and yeah, exactly. then yeah. if you decide to put it out into the world then it's what it is after that but as long as you had your connection with it you know that that this is what i wanted it to be right that um, that album though taught me a very hard lesson in uh the fact that like once you release an album it it doesn't belong to you anymore like mm -hmm. and you can't be attached to it in the same way that you were while you were writing it because even if it's the best album ever written, people are going to rip it to shreds. You know what I mean? Like every, like there's no such thing as an album that everybody loves. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and so it's like being able to be like, okay, I put this out and now I'm focusing on the next thing that I'm doing is something that like, I didn't know when we released that record. And so we released it and I was still like super attached to it. So when we got all that negative feedback, I was like, I'm never playing in another fucking metal band for the rest of my life yeah. like yeah. i yeah. did i, I stopped it, for a couple old years man guys? how old were you guys when you did it fuck that was 2013 13 that we recorded right it? it like 2012 2013, 2012, 2013. 2014, yeah, i was like make it to 30 yet are you guys already in your 30s no man no. i was i was like 23 24 i was young oh dude that's uh. that's the worst time to <clears throat> get negative criticism Oh, for yeah. a male dude <laughs> it really is dude you're yeah, like yeah. all of us are at peak ego peak testosterone yeah yeah our frontal lobes aren't even fully developed yet we can't <laughs> fucking make a decision because we're too busy following our dicks and <laughs> and so our creative release happens and then that's like the one thing we're like oh yeah we can control this and then you put yeah. it out there and then somebody else says oh no dude i don't like that and you're like fuck that motherfucker dude yeah, right. but now 10 years later you're like oh, i really actually don't even care what people are saying no not at all like yeah. it's the kind of thing where it's like people people are like dude do you like do you read youtube comments on like a legion shit and i'm like or what are you fucking stupid like yeah like, <laughs> i don't i really no, actually i don't do fucking that, read you youtube know? comments are you yeah, kidding yeah. me like i don't give a shit about what those people have to say like <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. yeah i uh I, you know I, that's that's the trippy part because when you have like like we keep saying i this i that i this you know like our, our individual thoughts and how on our perspectives and stuff and when yeah. you have a band you've got multiple people yeah so yeah. when everybody like when the band's sound evolves and everybody's on the same page it's like you guys are collectively evolving to go and yeah. go into this other you know page mm -hmm. like yeah you know, when you're when you're jamming and somebody comes up with a riff and they they're all super pumped on it and then somebody else says nah, i don't really know but it's kind of you know on the saucer side right there you know not really too <laughs> sure and then you're like oh shit you know so it's like it's, it's kind of a trip I just thought about it right now, like, you know, of like certain band members that leave bands because the sound changes to where that's not what they're into, whether they started it or not, or, or what, or whatever, you know, but it's, it's actually pretty rad when, I mean, cause it is like, if you're a fan of the band, it's collectively as one. Yeah. And yeah, when their yeah. sound changes, it's kind of like yeah. the artists individually, you know, they're, they're sound changes and you know and how they want to do things so it's actually pretty rad when it's like when it's that, like but there's certain bands that can do it you know like radiohead 
Like for me oh, yeah. personally, like Radiohead, when they change their shit, it's like, oh, what? You know, and you're still, you know, still super pumped and Deftones too. Like, you know, how they're, you know, these should be, you know, you just always talk about bands that kind of get soft or mellow out later. I wish I could use different terms, but I don't want to, you know, get <laughs> soft, in trouble. Cali, Cali Death Fest, you know, there's, I really like to use my real slang let here. Me, uh, let me break out the Cali Death uh, lexicon, make sure it still fits <laughs> our guidelines. Uh, yeah. Soft. Like, oh, man, I, uh, I, what I, else I, did you it's say? so hard to be politically correct right now, but these days are crazy, so I'm really trying. But, uh, but it's, you know, it's a trip, man, because then you're like, okay, why did they, you know, why did they get all soft and, you know, lame or whatever but yet when, the word's soft when everybody when every <laughs> right now dude i, I don't know i don't know what you're talking handle about. that dude come on when soft is just too far is i know i know go to a hard taco to a soft taco <laughs> yeah, awesome. dude. let's let's bring it back to casey's birthday yeah let's have a little yeah. interview well, that's, with casey let's speaking, casey. speaking of soft <laughs> yeah, I, know, I think kind of, casey's soft now yeah. after all this time yeah, well, it's kind of like the same kind of stuff, you know, like when, when sounds change and things change and the <laughs> band isn't like everybody that's on board and when you have to play when the sound changes, like you'd much rather, you know, like, it, you know, you'd much rather play something else. And it's like being in a band's like having five different girlfriends that you try to figure out like where yeah. to eat. Yeah, Dude, I'm like, yeah. yeah, sometimes <laughs> if yeah. everybody one not, person if wants every... sushi. One person wants, you know, dude, like if everybody's not on board or on the same page, dude, like that's exactly what it's like, you know? Yeah. And it's crazy. And that's what sets the differences and, you know, amongst every, amongst everybody. The coolest oh, yeah. thing to me though, is like when those, that vision does like align though. Right. Yeah. Like when, when everybody's on that same page and you're totally. all pushing towards yeah. that same creative vision, yep. like totally. something, something magical about that shit. Yeah. Oh, and, thousand percent. Uh, the dude. energy collides, dude. Looking, I feel dude. like I feel like under a Western Sun was definitely one of those situations where it's like yeah, I, I, there was one no of those things where it was like from anybody on that. That was yeah. just like I guess we're like, just gonna do it this way. We're all yeah, feeling yeah, it, so yeah. all of us were vibing so on it, man. Yeah. We were all just like, dude, like let's. Yeah. Yeah, this is what is we totally want to do. under the Western Sun right now. Oh, I, I'm fucking. <laughs> I am under it, dude. I'm so down. No, I I fucking love it, dude. I man, come on, dude. You know. You guys all love like Freddie Mercury and shit. You guys, you love that tender <laughs> shit. Come on, right, you love yeah. the tenderness, yeah. and then, exactly. then it just grabs you in the most tender yeah. shit, and then just destroys you with fucking, yeah. you know, like a full voice thing. And like, that's Riley. What you can do, and you are amazing, and can do that stuff. And that's very fucking awesome. Thanks, Viva man. la Riley. Thanks, and man. and you know, dude. Here's the thing growling and screaming is fucking awesome yeah and real singing guess what is also fucking awesome you know it's like <laughs> oh, exactly yeah. duh it's kind of thing like, where it's like, we all started. like like bro like hello, like you know you take it to other instruments right and it's like like are you really trying to tell me that you never fucking play your guitar in a clean tone ever like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly like, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah i know you're always just fucking have your fucking yeah. distortion on like always like in my head when weird. i do it it goes jun 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 yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. we all it's, love barbara streisand i mean it's, real. it's, 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 same kind of thing. it's like yeah bro yeah. you you always do full velocity fucking hits on your snare you never do yeah. fucking side side yeah. stick shit you yeah. never do it like fucking no ghost notes that's how i feel that's how i feel every time yeah. someone's like fucking clean vocals i'm just like man get fucked yeah. Like every other <laughs> instrument has dynamics. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Diego, so. has there been pushback on any like discouraged record? Like, do you ever get what's what's like the the base you know negative feedback on, on oh, discouraged stuff? Thousand percent. How could, how could there be percent? negative? Dude, Discord. we got Damn. well mainly from our Texas fans. We got too fast. Because, what? Before gorgeous no, thing? Like because what? before <laughs> wait, wait, what a minute. What? Like, chaotic and okay. crazy. Like, what the fuck? Uh, the the, the, like, the start the, over, the, start the, over. The, okay. <laughs> the cognitive the the evolution of Discord is as a band collectively, we all wanted to be fast and brutal and just in your face the whole time. You know, the whole time, just brutal and fast and just, ah, the whole time. That's what we're here for. That's why we play this music. That's what we all just, ah, you know? Yeah. So, but when you, when you're learning, you get, you know, muscle memory and stamina and everything, you get faster. And when you, and technique and the whole nine yards longer you're in the game, you just evolve. So in, our, in the demo, in the Discord demos, 
think Ricky was only playing drums for maybe a year or something when he recorded cog the cognitive demo. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Two, I yeah, I could be full of talking out of like the smoke I was blowing earlier, but <laughs> it was very early in his career, and he always tried to be faster and faster. So every Discord album has gotten faster as we've gone as, as we've gone on. So a lot of fat like the the Texas we were playing a lot of festivals and you know the underground was like that it was growing and it was getting real solid and the internet and everything was blowing up in the early mid 90s and all of a sudden like we like when uh when consume came out you know hound from uh what corpse corpse crystal is that what it is from Texas he was he was like man he's like I really you know I love you guys and I, and, I, and I like the album. He's like, but you guys are getting too fast, man. He's like, everybody's getting too fast. He's like, <laughs> he's like you know, he's like, he's like, you're losing your groove. He's like, you guys are losing your groove. And Slam and Slam wasn't around back then. You know, you had Doom, you had Sludge. Or, yeah, because she like got it wasn't fast at all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but but it was still but it was still like half of that was like strangulation tunes, and then I was more in like from hanging out with deeds so much i was kind of lean and then him kind of you know like leading us is in okay we're now we're, you know we're signing the Erebos and then unique leader and this is what we're doing we're getting the game the underground's coming up so we we're kind of like veering towards you know eric's flavor in a sense and what this underground scene was 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 vibing off of on top of you know like our own stuff but that's who our competition was that we saw so we were like okay we're gonna find, you know what can we do with this I thought you, you weren't know? competitive dude no, we weren't competitive. I didn't. I didn't even finish that story. But yeah, that's the next one. But um, <laughs> but it was a trip because it is. It's faster, and you kind of lose. I mean, you know, we lost the slam essence, I guess, because there was. It was even there. Even like uh, uh, demise of the Trinity, Jin Jin Jan and Jin 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 Jin. You know, if that yep. was like two albums earlier, it'd be all Jin Jin Jan and Jin 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 Jan and Jin. So. You know, they were like, oh, dude, what's up? What up, man? I can't fucking pick up chains. The second one does sound groovier. I will yes. say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, you know, they can't pick up chains and stomp to this stuff. That's, yeah. that's where the circle pit yeah, and the just, right. you know, I mean, running just comes people, into play. People said the same about Despise the Sun when that came out, though. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Cool Ross comes in all of a sudden, you know, Terrence is like, what? Terrence and Cerrito can just fucking, ah, you know, and to where Chris Richards has to pick up a pick, dude, because, you know, he's like, oh, what? And he was a shredder. You know, like doing leads on bringing the spawn and just, you know, his fingers are just picking. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, you know what? I got to use a pick for this new stuff because it's just, I got to line up. I got to line up with these dudes. You know, I was just talking to someone the other day about uh, when when Deeds made the switch from like chuggy ass OSDM into like fucking Cali Tech Death with with fucking of what's to come. Oh, yeah. Bro, Uh, that shit like changed my fucking life. Like I like of what's to come is one of my favorite fucking albums of all time like me fucking I too dude me too man cannot too. fucking believe how all good right, that right. fucking album is like right, and like don't get me wrong hold on right now, like yeah. don't get me wrong because like tra- <laughs> trading pieces and like reduced to ashes like that shit fucking rules like and it's super uh, fucking sick inbreeding the anthropology yeah, yeah, dude, yeah like, like so fucking good like like there's that's, there's that's not a shit. bad deeds release in my opinion but like bro I when agree. they when they fucking kicked it up to fucking 12 on fucking of what's to come and portals to canaan and shit and started playing like solo dog and like the way they would structure shit like that fucking part in like the third song on a uh, on of what's to come where they do that fucking centuries ideology push it's just like it's yeah, yeah, so just... fucking cool man and like oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm all for that shit. It's like the other direction of what we're talking about, right? When like a band goes from being like super heavy to like kind of more mellowed out and like progressive yeah. and shit. But the when you bring thing, it back, it's all good because you got the, the other same thing flavor, totally dude. gets my dick hard when a band goes from being like, yeah, we're like chuggy, groovy metal to like, nah, bro, we're fast as fuck. Like I, that shit <laughs> yeah. is so fucking cool. Dude, all you need is Jacoby Kingston, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. The fucking pirate. Of death Look metal. Shout out. That, dude. Yeah, well, now the eras are combined. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So it's, it's all, everyone's happy now with the new yep. ones. There's no the bad new. deeds album. They're all fucking no, great. It's all no, good. They're stuff, all amazing. Yeah. All yeah. Good David, stuff. what do you think are your like favorites? For deeds? Yeah. Um, I mean, 
fuck. Pro, I mean, Path Michael is Michael Hamilton. So he's my nostal- favorite. Nostalgic for me, probably. Path of the Weakening. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I like so everything before that as much. And I like things after that, like parts as much. But like. Dude, what was that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember Jimmy, we were on tour and I was like, you know, that was, that song was just one of my favorites, dude. So I think Jimmy T fucking wrote like a song or two on that. The rest in peace, mad motherfucker. And he was like, you know, fucking, he's, you know, sitting there showing it to me, dude. And I was like, you get to be on the road. That was like my, my first experience of getting together with another band and learning something that you're just super pumped about. Oh, yeah. And you actually learn it from the dudes that wrote it, you know? You just, yeah. I didn't want, I'm sorry to jump in on your shit, man. No, but, no, you know, that's you know? tight. I oh, think man. it's, I think That's your love favorite right Deeds album is all like a nostalgia thing. Like, like, I don't know wh- which one you have the most memories of you, like in a certain way or right. a, a moment of, in time, you know, yeah. Yeah. Deeds is yeah. forever. Dude. <laughs> inbreeding like forever, inbreeding yeah, for me, dude. man. Inbreeding and yeah. of what's to come. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was I was, a, trading pieces pieces in the I was a trading pieces guy. Yeah. I was going to say, dude, I, was like, yeah. I was a train path the weekend, but then. Yeah. Those when are my I came problems. in on Mark, it was a, yeah. a, a step up for me. When Mark of the Legion came out, I was like, oh, oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, they're locking in. They're locking yeah. in on some shit right oh, here. Mike is they, they've amazing. Definitely yeah. found their fucking. That's how Mike path, found And this blow, is going to be deeds yeah. for a while. That's what it felt like to me. What yeah. about Joel? What's your favorite, Joel? Uh, my favorite Dudes Are Fresh album is. Dudes Are Fresh. Dudes Are Fresh. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. Dude, those yeah. dudes That's fucking. Sh- come on, suck it, shitty, dude. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> dude, those dudes. Probably uh, Trading Pieces. Probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dude, trading Pieces is really good. I'm passing, I, you know, it's uh, funny Path of the Weakening. Like, uh, Path of the Weakening. See, that's, I feel like. Those are I feel my like, That's Casey. Exactly. Me too, yeah. Yeah. There's not those enough two. love. For reduced ashes happening right now that fucking album is they're so all good, good. They're all good. They're all no, dude. Dude. i like uh, kind of that album. well because you're a newer deeds fan okay? yeah I guess you're an true. older I guess. deeds fan that's what... <laughs> yes. diego yeah. what are your fa- what's your favorite deeds oh dude as i've been saying the whole time inbreeding inbreeding yeah, yeah. yeah. that bet that album is so dude. technical it's, it's so super good. tech dude and then and that's oh, yeah. when i like i've seen i saw deeds you know, doing the trading pieces when they came down to Cali and or down to San Diego and they did the trading pieces shows. But when I saw them, in, actually, I got to play with them during the interview and stuff and got to know the dudes. Didn't so, Maddie so, do a couple of yeah, I, I, on that album too? Yeah, yeah he had a guest. He had a guest yeah, but it, but tell us album. about playing those on the inbreeding stuff because that's like before us. I, I, that's so fucking cool. Oh, dude, those, dude, those, it was all dark. Just that the essence of death metal was still dark. It wasn't like getting together with your bros and raw. And if you were, it was still oh, really? like the metal was still just fucking dark. It was like, well, it was like serious. Yeah. Well, then nobody has short hair, you know, fucking everybody wow. was a bunch of Hessians wearing black and all of a sudden, like, you know, no board shorts. So there was no flops. Wi- there was no wiggle. The jerseys, you know? No I wiggle. want one of those fucking Severed yeah. Savior jerseys, jerseys man. Yeah. I fucking yeah. need one. Exclusive. Yeah. Exclusive. Shout so out. Sick. Yeah. Shout but, out to Murray uh, Fitzpatrick. Shout yeah, out Murray. fucking Murray. Oh, yeah, Murray. Fucking nice. a shrimp on the barbie. Murray's the man, dude. Yeah, dude. That's that and a uh, fucking right hand man with a fucking fishing string and a weight. That's how he trained yeah. his right hand. <sighs> but um, no, when I that was those times when I saw those dudes, it was when they did a couple of shows at Cephalic Carnage. So I was my exposure. We played uh, I think it was like the library or something in Escondido. Mm, yeah, yeah, on, on Grand. Yeah. And, I remember uh, that venue. Yeah, dude, and. Just super small, but like you know, a big, just a small big room, <laughs> small big room, <laughs> and um, man, those dudes, Cephalic just came up and they're all around, atmospheric, you know, doom, fucking brutal, jazz, like everything, and then just in your face the whole time too. And their stage presence was just off the hinges back then. And then Deeds came in, and that's when I was, you know, breaking down drums and knowing drums a lot more. So I was fucking here watching Brad's like his his left hand blast. Like instead of a typical cannibal blast or bomb blast or whatever, double bass blast, he'd do snare first and come in. So it all it had a little different of a sound to it. And Eric and Jacoby were just fucking monsters, dude. Just it's monsters. the shit out of me. I remember seeing them I I think Carrie, you might have been there. It was it was Deeds of Flesh. I don't know if you were there, but it was Deeds of Flesh and Cephalic and Cannibal or something. And we I'd 
never seen deeds or heard of deeds i'm like this is right. like it's like 2001 What's 2000 awesome, dude. what venue was like, that at it was at slims, slims. oh nice. yeah slims. i was there yeah yeah and they yeah. like they came out and they're just like had their raiders jerseys on it was just like fucking Jacoby, yeah. like, oh, <laughs> another, <laughs> another shout out real quick another shout out uh dusty Boisjoli. Yeah. dusty was uh doing uh merch for deeds on that tour is that Actually, the okay. uh, the original yeah. severance vocalist yep yeah 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 yeah, yeah what up, dusty fucking love what you man shout out brother uh, yeah but yeah no they they like came up there and they were just a three-piece and i was like holy sh these guys like huge super fucking it was like huge. a rush kind of feeling for death metal like just so filling and like everything yep. was like and yep. they were just like in your face and you were just yep. like sitting there like intimidated like i hope they don't talk to me after the show they they're gonna <laughs> kick my ass <laughs> <laughs> they were gnarly looking too huh? yeah fucking, they look gnarly there's vikings there's... up there dude like, and then you like get you know once i knew eric more and jacoby more i mean jacoby was still a little gnarly but like you know he's super fucking chill but eric was like just like hey what's up man how are you doing well i'm like what the fuck like it's like when i met the dying fetus dude i've talked about this before on the podcast yeah. like when, I, when, I, when we toured with john or with uh with dying fetus and stuff and like they just looked like the most insanely like brutal band live and then afterwards john would go stage like hey man you want to smoke a joint dude blah, blah. i'm like what the fuck like, yeah. i thought you're gonna like beat like me up chill, huh? <laughs> you want to smoke a yeah. joint and then i'll beat you up dude <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would that actually doesn't sound like that's wrong on the far with. off from a Joel story because he has <laughs> smoked weed and gotten beat up after a show <laughs> by a guy in skinless. The basis oh, is skinless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He didn't really beat you up, he just kicked you in the balls. I'm just joking. And right? I told him to kick me in the balls because yeah. it was my 22nd birthday and I was you blacked did. out. It was my second birthday? Wait, 22nd. 22nd. Oh, okay. You totally right, brought that shit on off. yourself. <laughs> Dude, that that Wait. same night you were stuffed between seats in the van. And you he was destroying all the fucking merch. Remember, <laughs> he was fucking throwing CDs on the ground, fucking breaking. Joel, just Joel was crushing them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's doing his posters, his blankets, Joel. and shit. And that was after <laughs> I chased him through the fucking city. We're like, Joel, stop it. We need that shit to pay How did, for gas. I had to talk a a, a cop out. Of don't, of don't, don't don't quote me don't quote me what i said there but anyways <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> what's no, me and risha had to talk a cop out of arresting you dude i know what's i know up it's with amazing. your birthday dude like <laughs> well no that, just like, 21st, 21st and 22nd birthday. 21st and 22nd were blacked out like messes like they were the, now you're an adult and now i'm an adult no, I'm like 23rd I'm like, you were a now i'm like i have 14 white claws on a thursday night on a podcast <laughs> you fucking punched a window out on your 23rd birthday oh, that was 21st that was 21st i told that story a little oh, bit but yeah, david yeah. knows yeah. better remember he like slept outside like no like, i woke i woke up in the morning and i had i had david's in the driveway like, like i had david's like carcass uh, sweatshirt on that he like loved <laughs> and it was just covered in puke and all this shit. Uh, i woke up outside and i was like i woke up I'm like who the fuck puked on me <laughs> and i ran inside and there's like probably 13 or 14 people asleep on the floors and stuff and really? i'm like what the fuck who the fuck puked all over me this is gross dude and they're like dude you blacked out <laughs> You like punched out windows. You were jumping in the middle of the street and kicking cars at stop signs. Like, we had to like corral. I was like, "What?" It was my it first was blackout. Crazy. I was, was like, "Shut it up!" Was your up. first blackout. Yeah. It was my first. You blackout. puked on yourself. I know. And that was me. It was the sweatshirt was ruined. I had to get uh, Dave another sweatshirt. And oh, Spider Man yeah. pointing at. Oh, there's Man plenty man. of silverback <laughs> stories like that, dude. <laughs> And yeah, also probably... with like almost like brushes in with brushes with the law, dude. Like coming home from Moe's Alley, and you're like, dude, oh, yeah, fucking pulling yeah. your pants down and wallowing Halloween. across the street. And well, the had best my boxers on. Dry. I had my boxers on. Don't make it sound like it. Dude, was... you totally <laughs> had your fucking dick. Best was the way Josh. <laughs> wait, when Josh blacked out when when we went to Moe's Alley to see like a B three, the base. Oh, thing the base. Yeah, with the Billy Sheehan. I was there. And Stu yeah, Ham and there. and uh, what's the other dude? <laughs> It was, uh, it was uh the guy from fucking uh, uh jeff berlin jeff berlin yeah weren't they like yeah, telling yeah. him to shut the fuck yeah. up yeah yeah, yeah. And josh yeah. was like high-fiving us from like three people away <laughs> like he was just like this like <laughs> on my shoulder like from like like way back this guy who's just hitting it's my a shoulder quiet basil like, he's, like, like, josh he's like, like dude fucking the best he's blacked out <laughs> and then like yeah he's like he he was the one that was like excited about the show then like, got us all to go and stuff and yeah, then yeah. uh yeah then like jeff berlin and, and billy sheehan were just like 
shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> he was just wouldn't shut up because he was so excited, dude. It's like nobody there. Oh, it was the I, think, I think I told the bass player of the Doobie Brothers, Doobie Brothers, to go fuck himself that night because, like, he was. I like I walked I walked out of there because I was a in, way to I start in, a thing. Dude. I think I told the bass player of Doobie Brothers to go fuck himself. Well, the, well, the reason why it's yeah. kind of it's it's more innocent sentence. than that. It's more innocent. Than, like I walked out and I was like, I quit bass. Fuck this! Is like, I don't even know why I'm playing bass. I'm a guitar player. This is stupid. I don't fucking. These guys are so good. I fucking hate this shit. And I like walked out and the guy was like, Don't give up, man. But I'm like, Go fuck yourself. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and then later they were like, you know, that's the bass player of the Doobie Brothers, right? And I was like, oh, let's go home. <laughs> yeah, that is a go home moment, dude. Like, oh, I can't face anybody now after this. So, are you a bass player or a guitar player, Joel? I'm a guitar player, dude. All right. <laughs> He's yeah, I know Joel's a guitar player. Yeah. You got that yeah, new yeah. Guitar Hero sincerely... controller behind you? Yeah, that thing looks sick. As yeah, yeah, I got. No, no Joel got... has always been a shredding guitar player. Yeah. I, nice. you know i played bass for piss and figgles but i i you know i didn't, never really was actually i just kind of like fucked around my dad was a bass player yeah. and i was like into it you know i was like i'm down with it but then like i it's like yeah. golf it's like one of those things where it's like you can play bass anyone can fucking play bass but it's like it takes a you know a fucking week to learn and a lifetime to master it's one of those things where why don't so you ever talk about the taste of blood why don't you ever talk about the taste of blood? Shit? Oh, like, Carrie, should we, I don't mind going into that. I, um, it's funny on, he brings really? that up. I was just thinking about that. Good. Well, I'm <laughs> in, I was like, okay. Joel, I the taste it. of blood. I forgot about that. <laughs> Didn't taste of blood have the coolest guy in the world ever to be the coolest guy ever on vocals? Or yeah. was that? Oh, was Derek. That? Oh, oh, sorry. Me? No. Oh, yeah. Derek. No, no. Shout out Derek, dude. He so is Derek wait, no, okay. I'm thinking of something else. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of something else. Demon Carcass. No, I was thinking of oh, I was thinking of One Flew West. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, Ooh, One yeah. Flew West. Yeah. Oh goodness, Pass, right? No. There's so many deep references. Uh, <laughs> the yeah. deep dark references. Yeah. No, Taste yeah. of Blood was sick. Taste of Blood was sick. I was thinking of One oh, Flew yeah. West, which was not yes, great. It won the high, but... <laughs> high school <laughs> battle of the bands. Holy shit! I just looked this up. One battle. I mean, I quit after I I quit. I got I got kind of like me and Carrie started doing a thing, and they're like, oh, we're are you guys i was like asking them like are you guys still doing something they're like ah we're jamming and then um then they reformed with chase on guitar mm -hmm. and tommy um this guy this like drug addict um and and like uh <laughs> he's actually a clean and sober counselor now but uh oh, terrible story with him no <laughs> anyways he did bad he did bad things he went to prison he's fine now he he you know scientology whatever you got a but, uh, down there, right? bro like those, <laughs> those, those, <laughs> those those in between things could just stay up here and you could just talk about the dude <laughs> <laughs> talk about it after he might watch this i don't want to deal with all that he just, got, was uh, like, he just got really into palm trees and then just, <laughs> yeah yeah he just palmed out <laughs> yeah yeah but uh Anyways, yeah, that was a so that was a bunch of us growing, like uh, Derek Rickquist, who's you know Demon Carcass from Faceless and all that stuff. It was Tommy Leg and me, um, this really good punk drummer named K Garrett, and uh, we just we were in a punk band, and then um, we decided to we're like, yeah, we're into like heavier stuff, and it was like back when like this is embarrassing, guys, you guys are embarrassing. A Poison the Well was a new thing, a brand new oh, band, such a good band. Yeah, yeah, I know. We were like covering their songs. Ugh. And then we started to write our own songs, and then we played. They were like, "Dude, Battle of the Bands coming up," and we had formed like four, like four months before Battle of the Bands, and uh, we went in there and we fucking won, <laughs> like, but like out of like you know, fifteen bands, and we got like hundred fifty bucks. Just got like a bunch of pot and a keg and like did a bunch of stuff and we were like and it was towards the end of my Here high school you go, person, kids like, yeah know. that sounds like a fucking rad prize well so high school was like high school i was kind of like the stoner quiet kid i mean i was like always you know had a bunch you know it was nice to everyone i got along with everyone but i was kind of quiet on the side and then the last like six months of high school i played the the battle of the bands and i was like this fucking legend that got like the the vice principal tried to break up the mosh pit and just got punched in the face. Yes. <laughs> and everyone fucking hated him. And it yes. was just like, and I immediately was just like legendary status for like a couple of months and then graduated. So I was like, ah, oh, why wasn't this earlier? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, graduating at legend status is pretty nice, right? Yeah, I mean, it was versus you know. be versus getting to legend status and losing it a little bit and then graduating. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was like, hey, and then girlfriends were like, hey, will you take me back? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like all the things I was like, fuck yeah. I just walk out of this place like, fuck you guys. <laughs> but no, that was a. Uh... 
it was adorable but anyways that's a then chase joined the band and uh they're awesome i mean they did one album um there's a couple demos and one album and then um they all you know animosity all these other bands kind of spawned from it um faceless things like that kind of came from that that's kind of where the initial high school phase was for those dude that's battle of the bands in high school is a serious fucking thing dude when you, yeah. when you first see a school, band dude. playing on like your quad or something and like a ser- like a band that actually can oh, hold dude. a rhythm <laughs> and shit you're like the oh quad. fuck like you're like your chest yeah. goes out you're like what? what's going on <laughs> what's up well, that's where david that story <laughs> is that like literally no one else's high school battle of the bands generated bands like the faceless and animosity <laughs> like, <laughs> well those, well, those well bands well. are kind of a fucking big deal like well all right joseph, joseph, <laughs> joseph let's hear it bro what do you got so you know zigman uh yeah. played in the same battle of bands that i did as a senior and he went on to you know son of Aurelius. you might have heard of them yeah. in animate existence so yeah. david i was gonna ask you about like uh those old crazy insane shows we went to at the che cafe and stuff and like what was that one with the with like okay the first black dice show that like i don't think i was there for that one but like what like was insane he was like wrapping people around like on a chair in the middle and then like <laughs> what the fuck was that about like that show i don't know that was crazy um yeah. black dice were pretty good back in the day uh he broke all the lights in the che cafe with the microphone and like fucking tied people up with the cord he had like a 150 foot mm-hmm. cable and just kept weaving through them and like everybody was falling everywhere um it was fucked up it was chaos he, i think he shoved the microphone cable up his ass and got <laughs> naked and was <laughs> running around and shit dude. so yes. insane dude, Fuck, dude what about like... the what about that show the, that relapse record shit with like exhumed when they like back in the day and like soylent green we were um, just at the Che. Love Soil and Green. And dude. Christ Driver and Today yeah. is the Day, all those bands. Ah, oh, fuck. And, yeah. But exhumed, like, fucking, we're like puking all over everybody and lighting <laughs> yep. shit on fire and stuff, <laughs> blowing fire at the fucking crowd in their face. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you see the last episode, David? <laughs> Did you see our last episode or no? no? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> oh, okay. I started it. I haven't That's just funny it that like, it there's was an awesome story, right? You know, the episode after. <laughs> I didn't know if you caught that or not, but I yeah, think dude, I took crazy. I think I All took about acid theaters. that night and it was fucking <laughs> yeah, crazy. Dude. Chilling under the western sun, it was so red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like the exhumed episode only scratched the surface of the actual chaos of that oh, dude that i had so much career. fun dude those i wish david so was funny, on the episode i, can't, I want cause... i want to get them back dude that's another part two i want to do oh yeah but those david you and i used to go to those old impaled shows and all that and all the yeah. old zoom shit like we dude, saw all super the gore. Fun. all of us did but like, i've dude, seen them so many times i can't even count fuck. oh dude yeah <laughs> same dude, thing dude, with yeah. the at the pound dude they were like yeah. a resident band there dude they, they were on yeah. so many bills that we yeah you know, and they, and they always fucking came with that killer fucking show, dude. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. It wasn't just going there to watch some dudes play some gore metal. It was fucking. Yeah, their their presence was a lot more than that, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's awesome. Mike is playing with him. Mike yeah. Hamilton's such a yeah, solid dude. dude. Yeah. Like, could you imagine totally. just be like, our drummer is Mike Hamilton. Okay, well, everything's going to work out fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Exactly. Don't have to worry about anything. Locked it's gonna be in. Great. Yeah. Yep. It's gonna yep. be sick. No worries at <laughs> all. Yeah. So Carrie. Well, uh, that's how I feel with Odious too, dude. Ooh. No. Oh, I yeah. suck. Happy uh, birthday. Yeah. No public domain. Oh, it's not public. Oh, public. sing if you want to. It's cool. Yeah, it yeah. just got pulled, dude. Oh my god, I'm crying. I'm crying. <laughs> I can't stop crying. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god, I'm crying so hard. Happy birthday to you. Oh, he sounds Diego. better than me, dude. <laughs> Yo, Diego's a sick vocal. Diego from the scorch yeah. just sing me happy birthday. Okay. Can't Diego, get better than this. Come live, on. Come on. Did you ever do live backing vocals? Good looking, Joseph. Yeah. What's that? Oh yeah, I did. I did backing vocals. Yeah. I did backing vocals on gutted. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah womb and compost. <laughs> live like, though, live. Did you yeah. ever do it live? Uh, yeah, I oh, did. Yeah. On the, I, actually, I tried on the Bloodletting tour, but we were still so underground that certain venues 
I don't I don't project enough. Like, you know, it's just all like basically throat and my mouth to, you know, adjust the sounds. Oh, like a baby. <laughs> well, the, yeah, but, uh, it's, it's but, hard to so, project so, the gurgle for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, because we, we play shows, dude, and there's not enough. Like, we're all in the same. Like, there was a couple, dude, but they were, we were all in the same PA. Like, even Maddie was because we had Ricky's Triggers, his snare, uh, Ben's bass, I'm you know, like for the house, yeah. you know? And so, or, or there wasn't enough mics or something, you know? So it's like, I was like, yeah. eventually after a couple of shows of, you know, and back then, dude, I was a madman when I was when I was playing my guitar live, dude. I was a madman, so I have to stop and go up. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that er that early picture no. of you with uh with uh Cal Decap. Was it Cal Decap or I don't know? It was you with like oh. Travis? Oh, was wearing oh the me and Travis, dude. The but Jinko you, jeans even, or oh. the ass fucking. You posted it. Dude, and I was like, I I don't, I don't even remember what joke I was gonna make earlier, but when you were doing the fucking. <laughs> Sorry, dude. The break, dancing, dude. Talker, the break talker. dancing thing. All I could think about was you in those huge fucking jeans in that picture. Yeah, dude. You and fucking break dancing. Dude, I brought it like, up first. A helicopter. Yeah. yeah. The no, see, but this was that. That was uh, that was the second wave. That, that's when hip hop came in, as, as opposed to rap and and all and break dancing. That's when b boying wasn't really as as popular. That's when like MC and everything came into play. But uh, it's dude. We were like seventh, eighth, ninth graders, dude, going and buying like size forty pants. Dude, I wore the <laughs> you know? jeans. I did <laughs> now I now I buy those. Yeah, dude, dude is anchor David knows what's up, dude. dude. David, David's hearing us, and he's like, dude, I represent. I, I mean, I, I I respect because and fucking Riley. Riley knows what's up with hip hop too, dude. I got a few hip hop heads on here now, like. Let's back down on the metal for a second, guys. Casey's Let's down get with a little into an area. Yeah, Casey's a music lover. Yeah. Kate, I mean, Carrie and I love the two-pack. Yeah. We're big two-pack fans. Yeah, dude. First time. <laughs> yes. Casey, what's your favorite hip-hop album? I call Carrie. Those are the, the dad bods. Wait, Casey, what's your favorite hip-hop album? Damn, dude. I would say, I mean, if I had to, like, pick one, like, off the bat, like, like real quick or something. I mean, it's got... Fuck man, like I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a huge sucker Answer for the, the chronic, question, dude. <laughs> yeah, God damn it, Joseph. I love you to death. I didn't. Uh, I, I, I'm just didn't saying. Hear okay, what? Well, so. Give me, give me, fuck about No, no, that's oh, fair. That, I, 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 I'm sorry. Go on. Can I talk? Can I, talk? <laughs> Can I fucking talk? Come on. Okay, so yeah, I mean, of course, the chronic, like you know, one and shit or into is up with all that. But yeah. man, you know, it's got fucking Dr. Octagon and stuff. I mean, I'm I'm generic, man. Cool Keith, yeah. Dr. Octagon. Yeah, I don't man, think like, Doc Ock cool is Keith. too generic, dude. I, yeah, mean, yeah, dude. No I mean, I would say, I mean, I, I love I all that, that shit. You know, honestly, I, I would say honestly, okay, my top three would be the Chronic One, Dr. Octagon, you know, whatever that album is, and then uh fucking and then and then Dr. Doom. Hell yeah. Nice, yeah dude. A lot of doctors, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I love a lot of doctors. Doctor I, I really fucking like, like the, uh, what is that? The, I'm gonna miss everybody. What is that well, shit again? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. The Bone Thugs? Yeah, oh, dude, that shit's thugs. sick. I what love I know all that? of that, like vocal yeah. shit. Like, dig, 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 dig. Yeah. It's fucking dope. Yeah. As fuck. Casey's yeah. like, I love Mace and, and fucking Wu Tang. And <laughs> I fucking <laughs> love Snoop Dogg like yeah. to the death like that i follow Me that too. guy on instagram i think he's the shit is he's yeah. hilarious big so thanks anthony big is anthony and i met uh over hip-hop actually yeah, the did. very first time i met anthony i i was walking into uh the blue lagoon and he was <laughs> excuse me he was standing outside and uh i was wearing an anacon records t-shirt and he walks out. Nobody and he's else like, on this podcast knows about that shit. And he Maybe. was just like, and he was just like, dude, Anacon. And I was like, oh shit, because Anacon at the time, especially and still to this day, is like a pretty unknown underground hip hop, very very album or uh, label from Oakland. Kind of almost avant garde hip hop. Yeah, like collective. weird shit. Like yeah. And uh, he's like, fucking Anacon. And so we like start just like jawing at each other about fucking Anacon artists and like going back and forth and like all these. Yeah. It was like such a cool moment because like n I'd never met another person outside of this one other guy who introduced me to them in like moment, East LA. And I was just same like, way. I was just like, holy shit, this is fucking amazing. I was like, well, dude, fucking good seeing you. Uh, good meeting you, man. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. 
Where was and that? And he at? walks inside. It was right Blue outside Lagoon? of the Blue Lagoon in Santa Cruz. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he walks inside. And then, like, I finish doing what I'm doing out there. I say hi to a couple of people. And then I walk inside, and he's hanging out with, like, Carrie and Joel. And I was like, what the fuck? And so <laughs> and so I walk <laughs> up, and I was like, oh, it's you. And he's like, oh, it's Anacon guy. And I was like, dude, fucking what the fuck? Like, you know these dudes? And he was like, yeah, my name's Anthony, by the way. And I was like, wait, like, Severed Savior, Odious Mortem Anthony? Like, what the fuck? And, like, that was that was it. Yeah, that's awesome. Fucking... And then it was a match made in heaven, dude. Yeah, like, dude. And then, then he introduced we... me to Baths, who is now my favorite fucking artist, literally of all time. So I, Damn, I handed you a dude. physical copy of that CD because yep, they accidentally Obsidian. sent me two. Yep. They accidentally yep. sent me two. I still have it. Yeah. I was like, that one. <laughs> this one's for Riley. I came down there to either record or we were doing a podcast. My first podcast I ever did was with you, Carrie, and Joel, yeah. Max, oh, yeah. and you were on the Arela cast. Yeah. yeah, twice actually. One of my episodes didn't air for some reason. I don't know. It, it's maybe probably because of boring. you. I was fucking boring at the time. Shit. It was. It was probably at the end of everything. I think you were the last one we did, and we just yeah. like decided to be like, "Fuck <laughs> it." <laughs> on this one, they're like, "Yeah, dude, that's you not good enough." Dude. You're not worth it. the editing, bro. <laughs> uh, we, we don't but, talk about that. There is, there is a, a really cast out. I don't know if you guys still have it. I don't know if anybody has it, but there's one with we Carrie, don't. Joel. Uh, Riley and I all fucking we talked for a few hours, a couple hours yeah. at least, right? Yeah, yeah those sure. were fun, man. I actually recently hit up Max asking, like, hey, is there any way that those might exist on some hard drive backed up somewhere? And I never got a response, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. I still hold out hope and hope that I can <laughs> find those because you can't find them online anywhere. anywhere. I'm buying a car from his father tomorrow. It's pretty funny. Nice. Uh, you should ask him. Steve. You should be like, hey, yeah, Steven. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Steve, Steve. Zygman. Yes, yeah, Steve. but I will so, say, I Zig will say, being a podcast listener before that, and then getting onto that, and actually being with friends, you know, and being in a comfortable environment, we had things to talk about at the time. There were some laughs. Yeah. You guys you know? were ahead of your fucking time. I'll just yell it out real quick. Like that was like structured. It was like a actual show. I was like, Carrie was like, "Come on, like you're a." dumb drunk guy come say funny stuff <laughs> I was like, oh, so. and i was like actually had a good i had a great time and um no it was i thought it was like at the time i was like you know the first few episodes i was a little nervous but it was just like total flowing like you know we were all looking at each other too like kind of in a circle so it was just yeah. kind of like now it's kind of like a different situation where you're staring at a webcam and you have you know lag or you know what back in you guys were could have probably been like one of the biggest metal podcasts if you kept yeah. it going i'm just yeah, saying no you guys yeah. fucked up it's kind of like no, that I, <laughs> <dollars fucked up. laughs> we, were, uh, we were on i think we i think our stupid little podcast fucking peaked at like four or five on like the apple music fucking podcast charts because we were just doing it before anyone else was yeah you know what i mean like it was fucking yeah what year was there that? Were like a it, man, it was fuck. 13, 14, 2012. Nah, earlier than that. It had to be like oh. 2012. Was that Damn. pre continuum that I went on that shit? When I yeah. did that guest? No, I think I think you had already recorded one? your parts because I think that like you, oh, and, okay. you and Josh did those parts in like 2011. It's a fucking stupid piece of shit. That's what I meant to say. Uh, anyway. <laughs> he does. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, it was 2011, yeah. 2012. Yeah, it was like 2011, yeah. 2012. And, uh, <laughs> David, what did and you say? But... Casey, happy birthday. I got to fucking go. Oh, thanks, man. Oh, oh, dude. Right, yeah. dude. I think the we should start the mass dude. exodus, no, right? Thank oh, yeah. you. No, yeah. no mass exodus. Oh. No. I'm super Dave, stoked we actually got to hang mind. out and David, chill on your you fucking are... birthday. I'm so glad you came on. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Thanks yeah, for dude. having me, man. And everybody, super fucking good catching up. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Yeah. David, let's kick Wait, it. Real oh, quick. Yeah. Open, real quick. Real quick. An invitation. David, tell everybody how they can check out your like your jungle stuff. And yeah. Again, like the, the Warbreaker. Yeah, yeah. If you want to check out some of my jungle music, you can go to soundcloud soundcloud.com slash warbreaker. Um, got a lot of stuff on there right now. But uh yeah, yeah, check it out. I know. Super crazy. Yeah. Dark shit. Sick yeah, shit. Dude. Oh, David yeah, from Take ODS, care. we love David. Much Peace, love. David. Yeah. Love having you, bro. Out. Later. Peace. Peace out, buddy. No mass exodus, yeah. Joel. Don't fucking start telling people, switching the thing in people's brains to lead. I mean, you're He's speaking right. all good, so I was trying to figure out what. <laughs> I don't even know when we actually started recording, but it's only 10, so that sounds like two hours plus. So two or two hours and or so, I'd say. Two-ish, two yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh... <laughs> yeah, here it comes, here it comes.
Here comes well, the good hour. <laughs> yeah. Everyone no, skips to hour two anything, and then starts playing. So, well, yeah. well, that was so that was after you recorded your parts for Continuum, but before I, well, I think I had recorded my parts too. But that thing, so we recorded that album in like 2011, 2012, mm-hmm. but then it didn't come out until like 2014. Yeah, uh, just like sat on, on it for, for a some while. reason. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how that. What, so I mean, yeah, bro. Well, I I have no idea. Something. I have always just like like I, that that band. I have always treated as like I'm here to do vocals and that is it. Mm-hmm. Like, and uh, Jason's I like, was, I got an album. Yeah. You're like, okay, fun, well, dude. yeah, you know, pretty much. Football. He's like, he'll hit me up like yeah. once every couple years and be like, hey, like I've got ten songs. You should write vocals for them. And I'm like, all right, word. Last the last record that we did, I recorded all the vocals on that entire fucking album in one seven hour session with Zach on three hours of sleep. And then immediately drove 10 hours back to San Diego from Oakland. Jeez. It was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, God. Good album, dude. What do you I mean? Like it. it sounds like super chill. To me, you know? <laughs> dude. <All right. laughs> good album, dude. It's, it's sounds great. Yeah. What, was like, was yeah, like, Chase, like, like killer. Chase was like pulling on your shirt, like, okay, bark here, here, here. Yeah, here. yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's ben actually Trilipus death metal, dude. That's actually how I did the uh, inanimate existence album. I didn't write any of the lyrics or the vocal patterns for that record. I was like just there to do vocals because the yeah. the guy who did yeah. write all that shit uh, just wanted to play guitar because he had been doing like guitar and vocals and shit. And did you do that album? Crazy stuff. I like did the, uh, the whole album. Yeah, I did Never Ending Cycle of Atonement. What? Yeah, fucking. Oh, that's when Cameron fucking. No, was that when Cameron put it down? Actually, I wanted to play, or was that it? Vice night, yeah, that night that you were talking about with the Anacon shirt and all that shit when we yeah. first met, that was when you were gonna be playing with them. Oh, in Anime Existence. Yeah, you were gonna be yeah, playing no. them at that night or whatever. I, I might have been like a CD release show or something. Oh shit. That's yeah, no awesome, idea. dude. See, I'm a fan of you, bro, before yeah. I even knew. <laughs> I was a fan of that. Well, it's funny, though, because it's and like I, I contributed literally nothing but my voice to that record because, like, the way that we recorded all the vocals was that, like, he was in the booth with a talk back with Max, and I was in, like, the vocal booth, and he would be like, All right, so this next part is like, like the stars align, shining light upon the path. And I'd be like, All right, cool. The stars are the light on the path. Why didn't he sing? Like, All right, cool. He uh, he... he just wanted to play guitar on that record. I think it was the nature like doing live stuff. What? Is that he like he he wrote all the vocals. He he did all the vocals on their first album, uh, but didn't play guitar on the first album. I, well, I can't, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, I'm right? pretty sure that's that right. right. Yeah, they had a he different guitarist. Just, he, a different guitar player. he did all the yeah. vocals, time, but then he wrote tons of the fucking guitar on the second album, Never Ending Cycle of Atonement. Uh, along with Joel Guernsey, but then he also wrote all the vocals and shit like that. But he was like, "Bro, like this shit, like I can't do both. Like I can't play all the guitar and sing on this record. It's too much. So That's we need to find a vocalist." Rad. But like I already wrote everything, so this vocalist just needs to be down to like do my parts in the studio. And so that's what I did. Fucking, I didn't We're even about Cameron, right? Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. that's I didn't, so I didn't even dude. fucking learn anything off that album. We just went into the studio, and he was just like, you know, this part's like staring through the fire and i would be like all right yeah through dude. the fire I got, i'm gonna say, put you, that's I'm how gonna we did the, the whole fucking right album i'm gonna that's put you on so the spot dope. right now did you ever at one point during the recording you're like you heard a line and you're like i would have wrote that differently <laughs> no no uh, dude i was so i was so detached from it i was just like it's like bro like if, if you hire me to do a job and you're not hiring me for like my creative input like that's where it ends and like even if you want my creative input, I'll probably be like, that's not why I'm here. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, dude, you just want your chords, bro. Yeah, just dude. Chords. Like, yeah. So that's, that's awesome, yeah. dude. From I, Ron, I, I from Ron love that being record, though, my, man. Uh, Ron being one of my like a, an original like touring or live TVV drummers. That's how that's how I know of Inanimate because yeah. when they start when they were starting out coming you know traveling they used to stay at when I lived with my brother Joe at the time they used to come down and crash out our pad. So I got to know all those fools, dude, for like, you know, the, the car would end up breaking down on the drive back. So they end up crashing at the house for like a week or something. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like, I swear to God, dude, those, the, when you, when you see, when you know people without knowing their music and then all of a sudden, boom, they, they have like a whole CD and merch and, and it's super sick, you know? Yeah. You're just like, holy shit, man. Like this, this, like initially it was just this normal fucking person. 
and then the musician aspect comes out and then like everything they've established just so quickly you're like holy shit man like much love and respect to everybody <laughs> here my, right now dude, my favorite was like wearing the yeah, Kermit birth hoodies like i was, wear, I was like wearing <laughs> nice and like people would be like yeah i know that band i'm like dude they're fucking terrible the bass players like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, like and all my friends were like ha 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 in the background i'm like yeah but dude, this, this, this one time recently like one of the last shows i went to so not recently but like over a year ago now i was uh i was at a show i can't remember who was playing i think it was i think it was cattle i think it was a cattle decap show at, at brick by brick in san diego and uh yeah it was because i was standing in line to get merch from author and punisher uh and so i'm like standing in line and this dude is wearing an allegian hat and he has it on backwards so like i'm standing right behind him and i see my fucking band's logo like on the back of this guy's head and uh he turns around and i was like oh dude that's a sick hat and he looks me square in the fucking face and is just like yeah, dude, thanks. And just like turns back around. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's that's metal for sure. Yeah. 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 No one knows what we look like, man. So right, oh, yeah. Sorry, Joel. But no, right, so I did, I'm, oh, I'm going to get this in, and then Joel, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to talk for 20 minutes. I was going to say, Joseph wants to get something, and I notice he has. Go for it, dude. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say, I remember seeing you with an anime, and you did the lyrics to Staring Through Fire, like, so much sicker than the album and i i can't even listen to that album without thinking about that live performance because everything on the album is double tracked and you would do the like the highs on its own and it would sounded so fucking sick and i just wish i had a version that was just that and my other question <laughs> is should i drink another beer right now you guys yes or, you can yeah, yeah, you sure. and joel go ahead and you i'll never, see, I'll see you never do like, so please do the the anthony live, will take the over live, for me the, for you <laughs> I would like to personally. I'm just taking over uh, for my brain right now. I just want. I want to. I want to fight. I would like to. I want to fight on chime in and right. personally restrict Joseph from a beer. I think that's a horrible <laughs> idea. I, 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 he's I gone, dude. No, it's way yeah, too late. It's way, he's there's already no, grabbing it. There's no beers allowed on my birthday. <laughs> that's I just, uh, just want to make sure that. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that that deeply offends me and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then this thing is a it's a fresh a revision nice social seltzer yeah dude just it's a seltzer alcoholic. yeah dude you not know. alcoholic yeah dude yeah Shut tahoe haze from revision brewing uh yeah <laughs> no non-alcoholic well casey IPA. just said no beer on his birthday so i'm like dude <laughs> no dude totally. it was a joke it was a joke <laughs> <laughs> i know i know and i'm yeah put joke. that away anthony God, I'm offended. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> okay. See, all the blondes. I remember what was going I, on. We got all blondes. I just want to say, like, I love you guys, and I'm so, too, like, dude. honored that you guys came on. Fuck oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I, I am. Happy birthday, dude. When, when the flyer yeah, said surprise you. guests, I had surprise guests today because I didn't know I was going to yeah. see Riley. I didn't know I was going to see Diego again. <laughs> no, Diego Carrie was a surprise. See David again. I know yeah. Carrie spilled the beans on Diego. No, Carrie, didn't, yeah. Carrie called me. I talked to him on the phone for 30 minutes today, and he was like, he's like, yeah, I hit up Riley, and like he wasn't down. He had something going on, and I just like go pee and come back, and Riley's just sitting there. <laughs> I'm like, I know. Yeah. Uh, you got me. Uh, no. Well, <laughs> the reason, I, I think we ought to plug this a little bit. Uh, Riley's got his uh the first game his first video game he's oh, publishing dude. Dude, coming out yeah, no, I'm, I'm so sorry about that. i wanted to hear that i really awesome. truly yeah. want to hear about that that's please yeah, man please so, hear to talk i mean about. yeah when uh when everything hit the fan last year last march uh i think a lot of people were kind of thrust into a position where it was just like well what the fuck am i gonna do mm -hmm. especially people in music yeah and uh I had, uh, you know, fortunately been like sitting on a little bit of cash and, you know, had someone who was looking to invest in stuff and it was kind of just like a right time, right place kind of thing. And they were like, you know, I was like, well, let's make a fucking video game. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's, let's try to make a game. And, and so I came up with like this, this idea for this game and this script and all this stuff. And I started talking to like development teams and basically everybody was like well in order for a publisher to be interested you need you're going to need what's called a vertical slice which is like a you know exactly what it sounds like like something that that you can see top to bottom what the fucking game is going to look like how it's going to play all this kind of shit and it's just a little a little you know it's 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 not the game 
it's just enough of what the game is going to be to pitch it to a publisher. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what is that going to cost? And they were like, it's probably going to be like 30, 40 grand to get this something to be playable. The vertical slice. Yeah. Or does it, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it has brutal. to be like a playable thing. That was probably going to be like 30, 40 grand. And Sounds I was like, like well, blade, dude. I was like, what the 30, fuck? 40, like, dude. I'm not going to invest that much in a development like team that's going to make just a section of a game that I then have to pitch to a publisher that they might not even fucking want. You know what I mean? Like that's like, and then I'm just sitting on this fucking like $30,000 piece of fucking trash that like, what am I going to do? Just like pitch it to fucking publishers every quarter until someone is like, yeah, I guess like right. nah. So I was just like, you know what, what if we just did, what if I just did my own publishing thing and, you know, like self published it. And so I reached out uh, to my buddy, Steve Sawyer, uh, who did marketing and uh, release strategy stuff for this company called Devolver Digital, who released games like Shadow Warrior 2 and The Messenger and and Hotline Miami and like all kinds of super sick shit that he was like directly involved in. And I had known that from meeting him, uh, you know, the year prior at a show in Philadelphia. And uh you know, after talking to him and, and, you know, working on some stuff together and all this kind of shit, we just kind of decided to just like go in on this publishing company uh, together. And, and he hooked it up with a couple, you know, a, a few development teams that we ended up choosing two, uh, two developers to, to help with their games. And that was last June that we did all that. And every fucking day since then has just been nonstop, man, like fucking working on these games and making sure that we have everything lined up and, you know, talking to the right people, getting the right people working for PR and and key distribution and, and, you know, all this kind of stuff uh, while the developers are also doing their thing and, you know, asking us questions for like creative input or when we're going to have, you know, this, this one element ready for, for them to, to do stuff, paying for, you know, their switch kits and all this kind of stuff to get console publishing and all of that over the past eight months has finally culminated to the point where we are releasing our first game uh, tomorrow morning at Whoa. 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah, right. fucking... Boom. Boom. So actually it'll be coming out. So no. you're saying tomorrow morning, but ours is actually going to be coming out tomorrow afternoon. Oh, okay, so so, really... so this morning. It just came out this morning at 10 a.m. <laughs> this... All right, there you go. Just to get yeah. the timeline so, straight. Uh, just Anton like... Ball, in stores now. Yeah, <laughs> Anton, Anton, Anton Ball Deluxe on Steam. <laughs> Fucking, Steam. Uh, I was gonna ask you. So, do you just throw it on Steam and then like then you promote it? Is that how it works, or how does yeah, that like, well, work from like a well, band point of view? Like how it's what, similar. You, usually, what happens is you do tons of promotion beforehand, right? So it's like we've been working uh, with our our buddy Zach Gunnell, who does PR for uh, Suda Suda Fifty One, the guy who does like No More Heroes. Um, his his company Grasshopper. Uh, he does PR for uh square enix uh so he's done like tomb raider and all that kind of shit he did pr for uh hideo kojima and kojima productions so he did metal gear solid 5 um oh, wow. so he's got he's got a good repertoire uh and a lot of good uh connections for for pr and stuff and then we're also working with a pr company uh called evolve who does all of our key distribution and they put us up on this thing called their terminals page where people can subscribe to it people who do press and influencers and all that kind of shit and they basically subscribe to it they pick up keys from games that they think look interesting um evolve did the same kind of thing for like cyberpunk that game just that just came out last year uh so it's it's basically just been building a team you know hiring people who have a lot of experience in the industry pushing games and getting things out there and being really successful at marketing and all that kind of stuff yeah and uh you know, just like really circling back and hammering shit home, sending out press releases, you know, making sure that the game is in the people's, in people's hands at the right times. This just a few days ago, we had a uh, Trisha Hirschberger who does the gong show on Twitch uh, featured our, you know, our game Anton Ball Deluxe uh, on her little like gong show type of thing. And it's, it's, it's just about the, uh, I'm, putting I'm it in front of people. I'm coming back from going to the bathroom, but I had a question that I really yeah. I know so I'm so aggressive right now. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a few beers, dude. I'm sorry. But I, I got to spit it out. Three, yeah. Who's involved in the soundtracks of the games? So the soundtrack for, for Anton Ball Deluxe was done all in-house by the development team. Uh, okay. I think the lead developer, uh, Tony Grayson, did all the music. Uh, he comes from a background playing bass, 
and uh all he's super influenced by like soundtracks like crash bandicoot and like those just really like yeah yeah dude like like super you know that that kind of stuff and it's all in like a retro kind of vibe and then for our other game uh rise of the betrayer which is more of like a kind of dark 2d action platformer metroidvania type of thing uh the guy who does all the orchestral work for a legion uh joe ferris is doing the soundtrack for that game so nice i actually had a question about like you know you're releasing a video game and stuff and and having to do it like you know diy pretty much like have you what have you learned like from being a musician and you know um having to do something like that and have you learned something different to like take a legion or something in a different route from taking you know like going diy with your video game and is there like a different avenue you want to like have thought about taking about uh with the band music stuff versus you know like video game not not in a business sense i think that like our our relationship with metal blade at this point after you know going on six albums has is like so well cultivated and you know just just such a good back and forth that it's like there's no reason at this point even though now i know what things look like from a publisher standpoint to like take our band in that direction just because it's like what we have is working uh yeah but i mean essentially what made me feel so comfortable going into the, the publishing area of game production is that it's it's like a fucking record contract except in an industry that has money like it's (laughs) it's it's essentially the same thing you know what i mean it's like we're gonna pay for you guys to make this thing and you know we're gonna make our advance back and then after our advance is recouped we're gonna do a royalty split the only difference is that in music the royalty split is oftentimes in the publisher's favor and so you end up where you know bands make less off of their own work kind of thing because the pub because it's like anybody can make music but without a publisher or a record label who's gonna ever hear it right so it's like kind of like the power dynamic there is like we're gonna take more money off of it because like we're not only paying for it but like without us like who the fuck would you even be yeah Uh, and that's just kind of how the music industry has been geared forever uh but in gaming it's not really the case and so it's like with us we have a really unique publishing uh, publishing contract in the in the fact that we don't keep uh, the IP, so you know we do retain first right of refusal. So it's like if someone wants to to make another game, like like if they want if 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 our developers wanted to make Anton Ball two, for example, right, they have to come to us first, and we can say yes, we're interested, but they still have the right to go to other publishers and be like, you know, well you cool you guys are interested but these guys offered us twice as much money so we're gonna do this uh so we we give them it's it's essentially like if a record label didn't keep your masters basically it's like once it's done they can do whatever they want with it like it's their thing you know what i mean we're just helping them make it uh but in exchange for that we do collect a royalty percentage but we only take 30 percent uh and then they keep 70 so it's the kind of thing where it's like you know, not only are we entering this this circuit, this indie publishing circuit, but we're trying to do it in a way that like remains ethical and like retains our integrity. Because the whole point of Proponent Games and why it's even called that is that it's like we want to support not only like indie developers seeing their dreams, but like the the extremely underrepresented groups within the indie developing scene. Um, and then and you, you become know, I- a more desirable company to work with at that point yeah right? you well know, and that's the thing around, is it's like the you know. idea is that it's like yeah we let you keep your ip and we give you this huge royalty percentage in the spirit that it's like you'll want to keep working with us even though you don't have to um and uh i think that's kind of the spirit of it because it's also just like you know since since last june you know there's been tons of fucking major companies doing all kinds of like really you know, face forward kind of performative, like, oh, black game developers fund and like, oh, you know, fucking all this kind of stuff. But it's, it's a lot of those things have like kind of died on the vine because they don't really give a shit. And like proponent is literally the only black owned publishing company because my business partner, Steve is black. Um, And we're the only one. And that's, that speaks volumes to like the nature of the games industry especially like the indie circuit and the publishing scene yeah and so we're trying to kind of like 
make that difference and like support the people who otherwise don't see uh, the opportunities that a lot of other people see because of how clicky the game industry can be. So it's not only like a endeavor to like, yeah, make money, make some sick games, but we're really trying to like change the way shit works uh, and provide, you know, set a new precedent so that 10 years from now it can be like normal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man, it's a, it's, it's like probably the thing I've, cared the most about that i've like ever done in my entire life well, <laughs> so dude, I, hope, I, I hope tomorrow I'm, goes well <laughs> yeah i love oh, yeah, i love man. hearing about diy projects and i love hearing homies doing diy shit that i had you know never even thought about jumping into i've played video games my whole life dude yeah. never once thought about making one <laughs> never thought never once about thought about but fucking have, putting one have out have you ever played video games like riley though riley is like a legit yeah. gamer though. yeah no i mean hey, i know like, i know he's way that. deeper in it than me but i'm just saying like like i've got one question go for it um you said that the gaming industry is like different from the music industry and then you describe the music industry as like kind of exploitative in the sense that the industry the the label makes a little more uh yeah. than the the label or the, the band they have a reason for that what you didn't really explain how the gaming industry like what the conditions are that makes it it's, different. it's just it's just that like development teams are expected to make a little more money you know what i mean like you would never ever see a fucking like 90 10 split in the publisher's favor in the video game industry but that shit happens in music all the fucking time it's that um, bad yeah okay and so it's like you know like it's just not so the a 70 30 split is like standard in in gaming a, yes well no 50 no. 50 it's, it's usually 50 yeah. 50 it's usually 50 okay. 50 so the fact that we're doing 70 30 is a little bit like oh wow those guys are doing a 70 30 split that's kind yeah, of cool. i was thinking like any merch.com they print it and they get their 30 you get your 70 yeah isn't that how it works with like yeah. merch but that's for stuff. like physical merchandise that's yeah, a different yeah, yeah, thing yeah. Than totally like, totally than like a publishing like agreement um, yeah so it's like you know and same thing with like steam right like steam is going to take 30 percent off of whatever we sell because they're the distribution Mm -hmm. center so it's like you know their their distribution fee is very low because their take home is very high like you only have to pay like 100 150 bucks to put a game up on steam um but then they take 30 percent of what you make so it's like it's a give and take for sure but they keep yeah. those servers running, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Gabe's got to get his cut, dude. Yeah, dude. They've <laughs> they've, they've got to make sure Valve keeps making games, right? Fuck yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was a joke. Not a lot of people get the joke is that Valve doesn't fucking ever make oh. games. Uh, <laughs> That's, that is the joke. Yeah, you heard it. All right, here, guys, I, I gotta get going. This yeah. is getting, this is they're dropping. Fun. Yeah, I, I, dropping. I, I, yeah, yeah. I think I, I think I gotta run too, guys. This is the drop. Uh, this is all right, yeah, I know this one's My, so my wife, uh, my wife walked out about half an hour ago and like grabbed a box of cereal and then just like gave me the evil eyes. So I think I need to like feed her. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the the, the, the secret is to do it at a different location, dude. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm at my parents' house right now because yeah. they have better internet, dude. So I'm in their living room. Uh, <laughs> Handing out fucking playing cards while you guys are talking. Damn, <laughs> whoa, David Blaine, like... calm the fuck down. Fucking watch out for Trevor over here, dude. <laughs> watch out for Trevor. Yeah, watch out for Trevor. All right, let's Gary, All right. Riley. Love you guys. Happy hey, birthday, Casey. Thanks for coming, on. Hey, Casey, Thanks fuck for yeah, coming man. Dude. Good shit. Yeah, stay healthy, everybody. Hell yeah, dude. All right, so uh, let's just wrap it up then, guys. Um, episode 19 in the bag. Fucking had a blast tonight so many uh people that have been on the podcast and i'm i'm awesome it's excuse me (laughs) the beer's talking (laughs) riley it is awesome to have you on finally yeah thanks dude yeah man we want want you back again dude i always love our conversations you know you and i could probably do a separate podcast about fucking hip-hop because these guys don't even know what's up dude i mean <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. diego was was breaking so he could probably come yeah. in as a guest dude. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, nope we could talk yeah. we could do a doc ock episode oh yeah how about <laughs> eek ock oak ock ock <laughs> all right you guys know who that is buzz radar that was Sorry, far side foe oh no what's up <laughs> what did you that say joke? Joke? Uh, that was the far side <laughs> Just a little, yeah. little, little hook oh, I yeah. did right there. Fuck right. yeah. P-H-A-R-C-Y-N-T-E.
we we love all you motherfuckers for coming back every week dude happy birthday thank you Casey. again 500 plus <laughs> subscribers now that's fucking killer yay, we've yay. been doing this what for like five months so it's like average of 100 people a month dude that's fucking awesome yep. keep yeah. it coming keep it coming dude like this is this is super fun for us we keep coming back every week because of you guys so it's like Thank you very much. Yep. Keep supporting us so we can bring Devin Townsend and yep. Jorb's Corpse Grinder on our <laughs> channel. Yeah. <laughs> we can yeah, try we, have we have better internet than uh, Riley, I promise. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we, I don't I'm even know if we that. actually plugged Not my internet like the official plug. Riley, did you plug Metal no. Blade? No, or, I, I I host the Metal dude, Blade I'm live so, series. It's basically uh, another right podcast. Right at the end of the Everyone's fucking there. podcast, dude. Let's just, <laughs> yeah. I'm dude, just and, throw it up and, top. No, I actually I actually t I watch it every week. I've watched the the Corpse Grinder full one. I watched most of the Devin Townsend is working, but Riley fucking kills it. He's I mean, because we used to do the podcast back in the day, and he's like really honed his skills, and I could see him like just you know molding and and handling business like and adapting, and it's a, fucking awesome to see but like how reality, far you've come. Dude, it's Thanks, metal man. it's metal blade records dude so like are we really it. expecting some cali death podcast fans to be like oh i don't know that metal blade's got a podcast dude <laughs> i'm just talking like, about how, how good, how good. Dude, we have some underground true. ass people it's true though like yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah you underground well you're love the cali you, death podcast, you, so i'm always yeah. just like oh, shout yeah. out to the homies though but yep. yeah Riley, dude, thank you very much, dude. And Diego, yeah, dude, thank you for fucking yeah, coming fuck back. Yeah, dude. Diego. Yeah, fuck yeah, Diego. That Diego flavor, that that president yeah. of Indonesia flavor. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> 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 Except there's not a flag with skull and crossbones saying paraphernalia is punishable by death when you come oh, to my country dude. is that what they do <laughs> yeah that's right i got the first time i went to indonesia bro we're, all, yeah. we're at the airport there's this big green flag and skull and crossbones and i'm like in the airport dude what is this uh, thing? you know and i read the fine print well parif oh bro ever since then i never take papers or or lighters <laughs> when I go that, to, dude, they just need a flag like you're down with death metal you're fucking you get a discount yeah. All <laughs> know, yeah exactly i got people that know people that know people <laughs> no but uh we're, we're, yeah. we're in the west under the sun fool. so <laughs> calideath.com joseph's fucking working that shit oh yeah whipping new it blog. up so yeah there's a new new post coming i i just finally came up with it and nice if you've been waiting for it apologies it's coming right now it's all go. good dude Thank yeah you so you know that there's shit still coming there yeah. um youtube cali death podcast fucking facebook instagram all that shit tell your friends we love you guys happy birthday casey howard dude yeah. had a blast hide your kids hide your wife legend <laughs> <laughs> We'll see best, you next week, guys. Best Cali drummer of all time. Just yeah, solid. Plant that he's like, he's, like, he's like the Dave Cool Ross of the West Coast, bro. Boom. Dude, Dave Cool Ross is the Casey Howard of the East, dude. Oh, hey, man. Oh. Fucking finger looking good. <laughs> yeah, end it on all right, love you guys. Love you guys. All right. Peace, Peace boys. Peace. Right on. Still, Still recording. <laughs> Bada bing, bada bing. And bada bing. This is the. Uh, hey, so what's still up for you guys' new album, man? When are you, when are you, when are you coming out? I love, I love this. Just keep it going. Just keep it going. Fuck it. I have to pee. Yeah, that. Isn't that